<laughs> see if you can hear it. Uh, I, I was like, oh, when was the last time I went live? It's been too long. Yeah. Hello, everybody. We have Gaddy here this morning. We for do. all the world that couldn't trust me to host sprints by myself and was like, do you have any help? Well, the help is right. Yeah. Well, I was watching you last week and you're like, I can do everything myself. You know, I, I don't want to ask people and stuff. And I'm just like, well, I'm asking. I'm asking. I'm going to come on, okay? If people anyway. ask me, then, but like, it's the thing, and I'm sure that you appreciate the thing. When you just want to watch sprints and then you get a message, it's like, do you want to sprint? And it's like, no, I don't fucking want to sprint. I'm sat here in my pajamas just watching yeah. sprints. Leave me alone. So because yes. I've had that feeling before, I don't like to put people in that position because I will just say no now. I'm like, no, I don't want to sprint. Like Leanne's yeah. done it before where she's like, oh, if you're free tonight, like after your sprint, you can join mine. And I'm like, absolutely not. Like, no. Gosh. Two sprints in a row? Bloody hell. No. I, mean, I, can't. I mean, two sprints in two days is a little bit too much. Uh, 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 I've uh, conditioned myself to be okay with doing it multiple live sprints in a row, but I, exact, I I need to know that they're coming now. I can't just do it on the fly. I need yeah. to know that it's coming. So, yeah, I appreciate not getting the whole, oh, do you want to join right now? No, unfortunately yeah. not. I'm no. naked. <laughs> that's the best time to join <laughs> we are goth queens apparently i mean i've waited my whole life for this but yeah me too me too uh good morning and hello to everybody who has joined somebody asked how much sleep you've got oh um so i let the cat sleep with me last night because ash threw up when i put him to bed because I can't sleep when the cats are. Like, uh, so I let them sleep in my bed. So I think I got to sleep around about six, and then I woke up at nine. So that, that's um, cool. but that that's all I get anyway. I usually get around about three, four, or five hours. Um, I um I do I no I need a full eight hours otherwise I'm an I'm an actual nightmare like I'm an anxious wreck if I don't get enough sleep now like gone are the days of all nighters no twenty four hour readathons for me with no sleep in. Oh my gosh! Can you imagine doing that again? I think like twenty twenty one was like maybe the last time I properly did like twenty four hour reading sprints or or things like that. I just can't do it anymore. 2021 just broke me. I feel like we were all chronically online and now I don't want to be online at all because like I have PTSD for like being online constantly. I feel that. I do. I feel that a lot. 2021 and 2020 were the the year that broke the camel's back. For sure. Um see I used to do this. I used to sleep very little like you. Like my sweet spot used to be six hours. Um so I'd go to bed at like four and get up at 10 but now like i am i'm a functioning adult with a functioning adult schedule and it's weird it's it's weird as well because you're younger than me because i thought oh maybe that's what i'll be like when i'm your age but wait hang on i was your age last year so really i should have had it sorted last year yeah you know, i mean i hit 30 as well and like my i've sort of started because i work out every day don't i which i work out every day as well like who, who am i um yeah. But I have to do yoga after every cardio workout now because my hips and my like hamstrings are very tight. Like if I'm sat on the couch, you know, like kind of on my side, so, like I'm balancing on my hip, my hip starts to ache, and I'm like, this is thirty. This is 30. so I've had to like start doing yoga to like stretch out all of my joints and stuff. Yeah. Um, well, that after... must help as well, like with sleeping, because I feel like because I don't do exercise and things like that, maybe that's why I don't. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe I've just I, kind of I definitely me. recommend exercise for sleep. I mean, I do it for anxiety. So like um I have to exercise almost every day. I do when I'm well, I do six days a week. Um, and I only do like a minimum of half an hour. And I've started increasing it to 45 minutes a day now. Um, but I sleep as soon as my head hits the pillow. So I get up mm -hmm. at half seven, I exercise at some point throughout the day, depending on the day. And then I get in bed at like, I start getting tired at like 10. Like I can't read at night anymore because like I'm too tired. And then I'm just asleep as soon as my head hits the pillow. It's beautiful. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I do yeah. my reading in the morning because I get up at half seven. And I don't have to commute. Obviously, I literally walk from that sofa to my desk. I would so. love that, you know. I would love to just get up at that. I used to, as soon as I came back from Japan, my sleep pattern was messed up. But oh, yeah. mental, 
I woke up at 6 a.m. and got to bed about 10 p.m., which was so amazing. I thought, this is weird. I've never done this before. But then it slowly got back to being crap. And also I do a lot of stuff like with like American time zones as well, which I think has like messed me over after all these years too. So I, I, I need to stop doing that too. <laughs> um yeah exercising depression is rough i'm annoyed at the minute because with a combination of traveling hormones and um now having a cold i keep mm. being like i'm gonna get my exercise like back in order and then i'll do a day and then my hormones will be shit for a week and then i'll do i'm like okay my hormones are better and it's like i'll exercise for two days and now i've got a cold and then i'll exercise for two days and then i'm going on a trip and i'm like amazing like i just want to i just want to work out like please. you just want to work out and be hot it's that's true. I'm having a hot girl summer next year, maybe. I say that every year, but it has yet happened. Uh, I think it ha it's happened every year. What are you talking about? I mean, it's, I'm it's glad. summer for you. <laughs> hotter girl summer. Okay. <laughs> 2023 was the year of Slay, though. Mm. Yeah, oh, it's so annoying. It's mm, I've had this is my fifth cold of the year, and I'm over it. I'm so over it. Oh my gosh, five! Jeez, Louise, I had oh. back to back in January, but that's that's it. I usually when I get them, I get them back to back, and then I don't get them for a while. So usually, I'm floored for about a month, maybe the first month of the year. I um I had one in January. Mm. Um, oh. I had twins. True. I had one in May, one in June, mm. one in September, and one now. And I'm like, amazing. Love this. Wow. Colds just love you. Apparently. They never used to. I used to get like a sniffle a year. So I don't know whether it's because obviously like everyone was inside during the pandemic. So we weren't exposed to bacteria. So now that we are, like it feels so much worse than it was. Mm -hmm. I have no idea, but ah. it's more fun. It ain't. It ain't. If only we could cure a cold. Mm. What, what really helps me is uh, hot chicken soup. <laughs> That's usually that usually helps me with a cold. But it's I ha also have to drink it through a straw as well. <laughs> I just the thought of like drinking anything with lumps through a straw. Just... Oh yeah, yeah. It's got to be a big straw. It's got to be one of those big straws. Um, but it not only does it taste like really good through a straw, but that's what gets directly to the cold and helps get rid of it. Mm. I don't know how. It just it seems to work for me every time. It's honey and lemon for me. And sometimes if I'm feeling spicy, literally I put a bit of ginger in. Um, mm. But no, I just hate anything that inconveniences me and having the cold inconveniences me. Yeah, especially with the kinds, kind of work that you do as well. Because when it like lessens your... Well, I don't know about you, but it lessens my motivation because it's like, I don't want to be on camera. I just feel like shit. I don't want to do anything. And you've got to keep going. You I know. Keep... Like, oh. I'm editing. I'm ed I, This week's vlog, I'm editing as I go because I've had less to edit alongside that. So I mm. edited the clip from Wednesday and Thursday. And it's like, I am I, I look like I don't want to be here. <laughs> it's just like very, and it's because I'm trying not to speak too loudly because I don't want to aggravate my throat. So I'm kind of speaking like this. And it's like, I, I do care about what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You can't tell. <laughs> I can't wait to watch that. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna get on Instagram and be like, I can just give a shit about what you're talking about this week. It's funny because one one of the clips, the one from Thursday, is me talking about my new travel trip, and I'm like, I'm so excited to go to Greece. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have a really good time, guys. <laughs> I'm signing up if you're that excited. <laughs> it could work, you know that that tactic could work. People could Maybe. think. Oh, I'm very chill about it. Maybe, maybe I should check it out. <laughs> I feel like people very like have an impression of me that I'm very like sardonic and sarcastic anyway. So I think they're more worried when I do show enthusiasm or something. <laughs> like that. Say, well, maybe I should stay away from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be it because I also wondered whether it was because after COVID, whether COVID ruined my immune system, but like the only thing that I'm getting is colds. Like, I'm not getting any stomach bugs, ear infections or anything. It's just constant colds. Mm. I had a chest infection not long after COVID for the first time in, like, 15 years, maybe. Wow. And that's yeah. the last time you had it? That was the last time you had it? 
You haven't had it since? Yes. I used to have like a lot of, um, I was ill. I was one of those kids that was off school all the time because I was constantly ill, but that meant that I was never ill as an adult because my immune system was like solid. But um, now I'm I'm getting all the calls. It's annoying as well because like Curtis isn't even getting them, so I know that I'm the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Good least share. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard um, at this time of year as well when the weather's shit because like, I know somebody said exercise and depression is not great and it's like the motivation to do something is not great like it's it's difficult i agree maybe yeah maybe i might start exercising more again you should maybe. do a week of living like me where you get to put half seven every morning only have one coffee a day and have to exercise sounds like my worst nightmare honestly <laughs> That's why I want to watch it <laughs> it's just a week of torture yeah <laughs> i'll do it New year, new me. I think that sounds like a January plan. I mean, you torture yourself anywhere with, oh my god, you'll have to cook every day as well. Maybe do some casual baking. I literally, I just literally just ordered like a takeaway this morning. Like, this is this is my life. This is my I life. Get, like, I get one takeaway a month. <laughs> oh my god, I would die. I would die of starvation if that happened to me. I, you know, I'll put things in the air fryer. That's about it. I mm -hmm. hate the oven that I have. I hate mm -hmm. the kitchen space that I have it's tiny and when I did hello fresh as amazing as it felt to be able to cook and things yeah I mm, I, I love you but I, I don't know about that but I feel like it would sort me out though I think it would sort me out 100% I just think it might cook it too much like I it took me a long time of making routine adjustments to be able to get to this stage where like this is what I do every day mm, yeah well, is that, do I care enough about my own body and my own health to do that, though? don't think I do. I mean, you're getting on a bit, my love. You might want to I have got so many grey hairs in my beard. It's, honestly, I hate it. I hate <laughs> it so much. It's the Stop. first thing I notice. Start walking more vigorously. <laughs> I think your grey hair looks good. Well, I mean, I you, you can't really say that much now, but, like, I, I do still have it. Even when I try to dye my hair... It comes back through like three or four days later. It doesn't last at all. Um, I just, I don't like the the sides. I don't like the sides. If it was more even, more even out, fair mm -hmm. enough. But when it's on the sides, I just look like a fucking glow stick. And it's just like the sides of me are just wow. glowing. And the top of me is dull. Um. I, um, I, can, I relate though, because I don't have many gray hairs yet, but my um I'm, my face is getting hairier so i get like thick hairs on my chin on like these two points here and i'm actually getting laser hair removal you know because i've always had issues with my upper lip anyway because like i'm mixed race so i've got really dark thick hair um i'm getting laser hair removal next week but like i because of that i haven't been able to wax because you have to have hair in the follicle to have it laser removed so i'm shaving like every other day and i'm getting like spots of like thick dark hair here and i'm like wow like, I'm not even, well, assumedly, because I'm only 30, I'm not even close to menopause yet, and I'm already getting, like, thick hairs. Hey, laser hair um, removal sounds interesting. I mean, it is, it's kind of, it's not the most expensive. It is a little bit expensive. It's, like, for me, she's doing, like, my lip, my cheeks, and my chin, and it's mm. going to be £66 a session, and you need, like, 10 to 12 every four to six weeks. Um, and then you should be permanently hair free. But for somebody with me who has been shaving my face since I was 13, it's incredibly beneficial because mm. um, my hair's so dark. And because my hair's so dark, you can see it before it comes through the skin. So unless I have it waxed, I always have like a dark shadow because you can see it like under the skin, which I'm like you would with you as well because you're so pale and your hair's so dark. Like even if you shave, you can still see like the darkness of where your hair would be. Yeah, honestly, even the way I... I'm sure I've tried shaving multiple times. And I think even you've said before, it just doesn't look right. It just, when I've shaved, it does not look right. No. Mm. Yeah. You don't want to embrace your Doctor Strange, Gav? Oh, uh, no, I don't. I mean, you know, Benedict Cumbersnatch can pull it off, but I can't. It can be your snatch. It can be your snatch. <laughs> no, I, I, can't, I can't pull any of that off. Maybe if I was more fit and healthy, maybe. But I'm I'm not. I'm not. 
I do think the grey hair has always looked good on you because you've got like a, a streak through the front, haven't you? Yeah, like there. It, yeah. You can barely tell anything with this, like in the quality of my camera. Um, but yeah, I do have like a streak. It's a little bit like, what's her name again? Anna Paquin and X Men. Is it Rogue? Storm? Rogue? Storm. Oh, Rogue. Rogue. I think One it's Rogue. Them. Yeah. Well, Suki Stackhouse <laughs> in X Men. Oh, yeah. 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 Ah, oh, October Evernight delivery. I can't wait for mine. Did you sign up for Evernight? No, I don't really read much horror, do I? Oh, I know, but like, it's a something that you can still get. I mean, you do your monthly unboxings, so exactly. Do you see how many books I get? Exactly. <laughs> can you imagine, like, how much, like, you could add it on? <laughs> they make... already like those videos are the bane of my life, especially when I've ordered loads of extra special editions, and it's oh. like I've got twenty boxes here, and I have to film that. And then I have to clean up after that. And it's the editing that kills me because the excitement for me is looking in the boxes. When I've looked in the boxes, I don't want to watch myself look in the boxes again. <laughs> so I hate editing them. <laughs> but still fun though. But you should try and get Evernight if you possibly can. Just say it, just say it. You know? <sighs> no, no, I don't need any more subscriptions. I'm thinking of cancelling Afterlight as well, maybe. Oh, uh, right, yeah. Maybe you can Afterlight. Be... I mm, potentially, I um, I just want Afterlight to be book only because mm. and I mean they sent me a football romance last time, which I mean is great for some people, but I'm just like, and I know I'm gonna get a Christmas romance soon. I don't like. Them. Oh, but maybe I might like this Christmas romance. You gotta give it a try. Maybe I am gonna try Christmas. and read my Christmas romances this year because I've got like three, and I'm not a Chris. I just because a Christmas romance is like a Hallmark movie in a book and I like watching Hallmark movies but like I just don't find reading them a good time I think it's the level of effort you put into reading a book like I want to read something like with stakes yes and yes. Christmas romances is just like a little bit of entertainment and while I like that vibe I get it through films I don't want it in books yeah because you get the visual of the Christmas like the lights and the decorations and stuff like that I totally and plus you're only in that film for like an hour and a half I think when you're reading a book for like nine ten hours that's like a bit mm. too much of the yeah. christmas vibe so i get it i get it oh it's not christmas it's like an end of summer apparently oh interesting interesting choice it was better because Evernight is every three months right now. After like used to be every three months and it was better that way. Mm. Now I feel like I'm getting them too much and I feel like this year I haven't read too much romance. Mm. <clears throat> Sorry for my coughing, guys. We're going to start a sprint in a minute so that I can rest my voice for a bit because I only oh. get like 15 minutes before I start coughing. Yeah, bless it. Well, hopefully we get like long sprints today so you don't have to keep... So that I talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. But I'm just... I don't want you to keep carrying this live show on your back. You need to... You need to be able to rest that beautiful singing voice of yours, you know? My beautiful like, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, for everybody who's new here, we're doing dice sprints today, which the rules are in the description box if anybody needs a refresh. I'm going to roll two six-sided dice. Every dot represents five minutes, which is how long the sprint will be. And if we roll a double in any sprint apart from the sprint that you join or like the first sprint, then you have to switch books. You don't have to, but like that's it, part of the rules, you know? Yeah. Um, so let's see what we get. Not terrible, not terrible. We got a, a two and a five. I can't five. Five. <laughs> I can just do it like automatically now. Every, yeah, every single time, whenever I watch your sprints and you do that, I'm always like, wait, hang on, how much is that? I, I know it's like five minutes per thing, but I still struggle. It's I just like I could play Monopoly in my head. So like because I know where every space is on the board and they're all in spaces of 10. So no matter what I roll, like I know where I'm going to go because they're all 10s. So I just like, I, I I have a brain that's good with maths. So it just works. Yeah. I think it would also work on, well, work. I think you would be good at a Monopoly tournament as well. Have a thought event ring? <coughs> I didn't know they existed. Oh, I'm sure they've got many. It's a bit like those gaming ones, you know, how people have like Minecraft, uh, Okay. Well, I think there's a clue, a clue door tournament as well, somewhere in the world. You might have to travel for it, but you like traveling. So My problem with Monopoly is that I'm not ruthless. I feel I'm bad not. for people when I'm playing games. So I'm like, I wouldn't buy a property because I'm like, but then you'd lose. And that would be sad. 
Oh. <laughs> you okay, yeah, that might not work in your favor. Yeah, and then I get mad when people are ruthless played against me when I was nice to them. So <laughs> might not be the best. Well, remind me not to play Monopoly with you because you'll, you'll take pity on me and I'll be a bitch. I mean, isn't that just life? <laughs> that is life. It's just a reflection of life. Right. I'm going to cough again, so I'm going to start this sprint and I'll see you all in 35 minutes. <laughs>
Oh. Hi, did you have a phone call there? In terribly, um, wait a minute. What's £5.50? Curtis has gone to Tesco. Um, I asked him to get me a piece of ginger and he said, what? Oh, wait, I know what you mean. Loose ginger root, £5.50. And I'm like, a piece of ginger shouldn't be £5.50. Oh, is there not a, a whole bunch of them? I don't know. He needs to FaceTime or something so he can show it. I'll send a photo. Because I've also sent him for bagels and he's now looking at bagel thins and I'm like, no, I want proper bagels. Oh, gosh. Oh, the poor man. The poor man, he doesn't know what he's doing. What's the bagel brand called? Is it the New York Bagel Company? Oh, something like that, yeah. I haven't had a bagel in a while. I'm making the ones that we had at the um, Lake District last weekend, which is with bacon and egg in. Ooh. <coughs> oh, star, I want to shove that in both my mouth and rectum. You want to shove that where? You heard me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did. I was just shaking. I heard right. <laughs> no, you heard correctly. Oh, that looks. Oh, I thought it was like a cocktail there, but it's not. It's like tea, right? It's a yeah. It's it's honey and lemon tea. Mm. That's yeah, that's New York Deli right. tour. Thank you, Raymond. I, I knew it had New York in the title. Me I'm, too. The Statue of Liberty on the front. Yeah, I'm somewhat helpful. You know, honestly, that does look like a cocktail and. Actually, I had a mini bottle of Prosecco last night. So. I thought you were going to say, like, in that sprint. I mean, stranger things have happened. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> oh, God. He said, oh, fucking. So he's done something wrong. Ain't that typical? Typical blogs. Standard. Mm -hmm. How are we both doing? How are you doing, Gav? Oh, I did about 30-ish pages in that sprint, but I was listening to the audiobook, and I don't feel like I took too much of it in because Ash wanted to play as well, so I was doing that. But I'm definitely going to read physically next time unless I have to change books. But, like, yeah, it, it hasn't sunken in. It, it feels very Lovecraftian, and that usually goes over my head anyway. So it, it's been a little bit cosmic, and I need to concentrate now. I can't just listen to the audiobook. When did you start reading it? Have you just started? Or? Last night. I started reading it last night. Uh, uh, so, I mean, to be fair, like, I've only got, like, this this much left. It's not a long book at all. It's only 139 pages. But, yeah, it's, like, to a point now where I'm like, okay, I need to concentrate. Damn. I'm not just okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to read... Um, I got a jigsaw from the Lake Districts, and I want to do it, but I need an audio book. Mm -hmm. Um... And uh, I'm listening to the Slayers audio. I've got like three hours left on it, but I feel like I'm going to need something else at some point. But all of my audios I need to read along with. Or I could start Wheel of Time, but I don't really want to do that right now. Mm. Well, you may have to. You may have to. You want to get that jigsaw done. Mm -hmm. It's true. But I mean, it's not Wheel of Time month yet. I've got another month before I have to pick up Wheel of Time again. Oh, it doesn't not take a month to read. <laughs> Uh, normally about two weeks, but that's only because I break them down and read like 40 pages a day to keep my sanity. Fair, that's a really good show. I could not do one of those Wheel of Time books in like... I, I remember when we did the Game of Thrones books, I think I read one of them in pretty much a day, almost. Or like two days. It was it was ridiculous. I could mm. never do it again. I would yeah. never do it in Wheel of Time. I gotta pace myself. I can't. I'm going to actually start doing it with First Law as well, just so it feels like I'm I'm reading them at a better pace than... I, do, I feel like when I'm reading a book like that, where I'm actually trying to, like, really take it in, it's better to pace myself and read, like, 50 pages a day instead of just, like, reading it normally. Yeah. Um, Fair. You know, it's a good show. Slayers is good. It's, like, the plot makes no sense, which I didn't expect it to. But having the original cast back mm. to do the audio is fun. I can imagine. I keep saying photos of, I think it's Charisma Carpenter's Instagram or something. She keeps like sharing stuff. And I'm just like, oh, it just looks so good. And when I saw the cast and I didn't know the plot, I was very confused because I'm sure, like, if you think about who's in it, you're like, yeah. But it's set in an alternate, well, 
Cordelia is the Slayer in her dimension and Buffy doesn't exist and she comes to the normal dimension to find Spike because Drusilla is the big bad in Cordelia's dimension and Drew um, essentially just went off the rails when Spike died and Cordelia killed him. So he, she comes to his dimension to get Spike to go back to sort out Drusilla. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. oh my god, the best audio performance, you know it's Drew. Like, she is oh. so good. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh gosh, you're going to make me want to throw out everything on my JBR right now and just listen to it. Oh. Well, you have to do it in single speed as well, which is why it's taking me so long because it's like oh. an audio performance. It's like a play and oh. there's like music and sound effects and stuff. So it's not like a rush through it on two times speed kind of thing. It's like a, like I listen to it like I listen to podcasts, which is in single speed. How long? Oh, sometimes I listen to like 1.25 sometimes. It but... is. I think it's like nine hours, but it's in like 45 minute episodes. And every episode has Spike at the beginning, like, recapping what's happened. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I've got loads of credits, so I'm just going to get it with an audible credit now. Uh, and Because I, 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 I can't wait. I need this now. It's good. Uh, oh, got it. I love that. At a vampire themed murder mystery party tonight, and me and my friend are going to Spike and Drew. Hey, a vampire themed murder mystery party. That sounds amazing. It does sound cool. Curtis is going to a Halloween party tonight. I am not. Mm. Well, that just sounds wonderful to me. You get the house to yourself. Well, mm. you've still got the babies, but like, you've still got your time. It's true. Well, he's going to, it's one of his friends that throws a Halloween party every year. And like, I have been invited, but I realized that being around people that are drinking to get drunk makes me anxious. So. <laughs> just and I don't I do drink but I don't drink to get drunk anymore because that also makes me anxious so it would be me mostly sober in a room full of drunk people or I would end up getting drunk and then I'd spend all tomorrow being anxious so oh, yeah that that isn't worth it it really isn't oh. worth it and also in terms of costumes like I don't want to put time money and effort into a costume that I'm only going to wear to a house party that's got like maybe 10 other people there yeah yeah, I agree. It's not worth it. Yeah. Hopefully they're not watching right now. Not worth it. Your party's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think um, I, I, it's just not, I, I just can't. I get too anxious now. I just can't. Do it. No, I'm the same. I, I I used to be able to just go out and like, drink and have, you know, nightclub and fun with my friends and stuff, but I haven't been able to do that for like, two or three years now i just can't do that that's not my life anymore and i don't think i've like lost friends over it but like the usual people i would hang around with we don't hang around with anymore because of that because you're drinking yeah, yeah. and just it's like, not even like i don't i i i say i don't drink i don't get drunk like i do like if we went for food i'd have one or two cocktails or mm. like i don't know like in, in summer i'd go for a beer a pub but I'm not drinking to get drunk if I start to get more than buzzed then I start to get anxious and it's like it's not even a conscious response sometimes because some people get anxiety in terms of like they worry what they said when they were drunk mm -hmm. I, I don't it's just like a just an anxiety like I just feel anxious all day and I just can't be bothered no, uh, I get that Sophie I'm pretty sure that you are literally never sober Just living the life, you know, living the life. You got it when you were when you're young, Sophie. But couldn't be me now. Like I have like my uni friends. Oh, I love them to bits. I do. Like they were my housemates in like second and third year. And I still say them occasionally. But like one of them's now well, one of them's lived in Australia the last oh, gosh, ever since we left uni. And another one's just left to go over there uh with another friend. Mm -hmm. So it's like three of them. And uh I would have loved to have gone and stuff like that, but I know that their lifestyle is drinking, going out, partying, and it's just not me. It's not me anymore, and I feel like such an old man, but I know I shouldn't because it's absolutely fine not to be somebody who goes out drinking, but I've been surrounded so much with so many people who do. It's mm. hard to not oh, I'm, I'm the old and boring one now, you know what I mean? Even though I know well, I'm I was I was like you when I was younger. Like I was never sober. Like I was always drunk, and it, it's weird as well because I used to socialize, but just for the sake of socializing. Now I just don't, and I just don't want to, and it's just so weird. Yeah. Oh, you've got your circle. You've got your friends. You don't need to. 
like not like what we used to be like when we would i used to be friends with strangers in the bathroom and would be besties for like five minutes and learn everything about each other but now i'm like that's my worst nightmare i think as well going out now just reminds it makes me sad because it reminds me of what i used to enjoy drinking Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, I remember when I was 20 and I'd be in the smoking shower and like just prop up the smoking shower the entire night and be like out of it. And now I'm just like, I, so I get drunk and I think about how much of a better time I was having 10 years ago. Yeah, that is sad. <laughs> it's sad and depressing. But hey, when we went to the cabin last year, we didn't exactly get drunk, but we had a bit of red wine. We had some wine. Mm -hmm. that was like, but that wasn't us trying to get drunk. That was just us having, having a drink. Night. Yeah, having a drink, yeah. which was way really nice. So that I can do, but when it's um, when it's more than that, it's it's too much. The thing for me as well is that I sometimes forget that I don't like drinking anymore, mm. and then I'll drink, and I'm like, oh yeah, let's go out, and then I do it, and then I regret it, and I'm like, why did I do that? Okay, next time you need me there to stop you. Is it a Taurus thing? Is this a Taurus thing? Because. I don't know. It's, it's the only connection I can think. I found that I'm very, and I know how you're going to take this, I'm very mouth oriented. So I'm always thinking about like food, drinks, and things like that. So like I. Things like that, yeah. Things like, things like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like it's hard for me and stuff because it's like I feel like going out for drinks or going out for food is like what I like to do. Um, but I don't actually like to to drink anymore but it's like i feel like my brain's betraying me as well leanne yeah none of us are 25 i speak for yourself i i'm 25 plus six <laughs> we are stubborn we are mm. i think it's a, it's a routine thing as well like it's easy to be like i like drinking and then you realize that you don't but mm. then you have to like formulate new I guess brain connections around alcohol. Yeah, I have to justify it like, oh, it's not me. I'm not the problem. It's... I just don't understand though, because like, obviously we're in our, I'm 30, or, are you still 31? Yeah. Yeah. Um, my neighbors <laughs> yeah, are like, I'm not older. I promise I'm not older than I that. I was like, because I know you and Cody are both older than me, and I was like, which one, which one is yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, my neighbors like in the 50s, and they are drunk every weekend play wow. music in the garden and like wow. in the summer they just sit out in the garden and like they just they just drink and i'm like i just don't understand like how because wow. i hit I, when i got to like 25 i was starting to feel my hangover and starting to be like oh like I, no yeah. and but like they're still getting drunk every weekend and i just don't i don't get it wow um i guess when you find someone maybe it's also like the mentality of the people around you as well maybe so maybe the couple next door are just so in love that their love transcends all hangovers, maybe. Their love transcends all hangovers. I'm going to um, complain to Curtis when he gets home and be like, why does our love not transcend all hangovers? Exactly. So there might be some problem there. Gonna, well, I mean, if you can't get a piece of ginger, then there is a problem. <laughs> can't get a piece of ginger. What what look do I have of getting love that transcends hangovers? Exactly. You're asking for a little bit too much there. <laughs> yeah, we have to give him his ring back. Now he's gonna come home and I'm gonna be in a mood with him and he's like, What? <laughs> what I do now? <laughs> Our love didn't transcend hangovers. Uh... well, I didn't have um anxiety when I was younger. Well, maybe I did, but not like I do now. Maybe it was like really repressed until like a lot of the things that I I know that I did back then, I I think might come down to like anxiety or like even ADHD. There was so many things that I I did and the way I react sometimes is not. Like I look back on it, and I think, why did I react that way and stuff like that. I think it's a lot of it's repressed, and now that we're older and wiser, we just know about it a little bit better. Maybe maybe indeed yeah like i shouldn't it cannot relate i it's weird because in newcastle as well there are so many people who are 40 45 50 like there are a lot of older people out drinking 
every single well nearly every single day in Newcastle. We we come from very similar places because like Newcastle and Liverpool are very similar in that regard. Like when we were walking through, like if you are walking through town on a Saturday night, like early evening, and you see a group of girls who are like properly done up with like big curly hair and like false eyelashes and like makeup and like wearing gorgeous dresses they're either scouts or they're geordies like that's the only option so like drinking where we're from is like a big thing and like going out every weekend and stuff so like it was the same at home like at the the weekends i was just out that was just what i did yeah but not anymore we've got better things to do now we've got way better things to do got books to read we've got books to read video to make candles to make you know (laughs) <laughs> and also uh, TVs to look after. Glasgow as well. The Glaswegians drink a lot. Lots of cool places like that. I find the Mancunians aren't as bougie. Like it's the Scouses in Manchester normally that I see that are like super super bougie. Manchester I associate more with like children's, like oh yeah, going out in in jeans and like a denim jacket and getting drunk. Yeah, I because when I used to do like city breaks every three months with those friends that I'm not really friends with anymore. Um, when we used to like do city breaks and we just go out the entire time we were there, and we went to Manchester and Liverpool. And Liverpool was definitely a lot more rowdy and mm-hmm. intense, whereas Manchester wasn't as as bad for me. But, but I guess it, it really depends on day and time i guess where you go Um, yeah those were the days i'm yeah it's when people are getting really drunk and like wanting to party that i can't hack it like if if like the thing that curtis is going through tonight was like a chill hangout thing and it was just like people having a drink and doing something else then i would go Mm. um but just like when there's a lot of alcohol i'm like "Mm, i'll just skip it's off button is he bringing me bagels? What bagels did you get? Come on. I had to go leave all my stuff at the checkout. To go get them? Go change bagels. Ask someone to remove the old bagels from the machine. Oh dear. Oh. What ginger did you get? Did you get ginger? Why was ginger 5 it's not, it's 550 per kilo. Oh, it's 550 per kilo. Okay. 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 Right. I'm walk the dog now. Okay. That's all of my questions answered. I was going to say, we can all relax now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I need to roll for a sprint. Oh, yes. Make it a good one. Oh, well, I've lost a dice already, so it's going well. (laughs) See, you don't drink, but I feel like rolling dice is a lot more stressful, to be fair. It's true. It is. Maybe I need a drink to get myself through these sprints. (laughs) Well, you know what? Maybe that tea really is cocktail, and you're just telling us it's it's a tea. Maybe, maybe um, I deny too much. Maybe I am drinking right now. Maybe you are. It's not ideal, but it's not terrible. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Yep. Hey. <laughs> I should have uh, got that just by looking at it, but I didn't. I do not drink raw egg through a straw, Elizabeth. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm not that odd. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's honey and lemon tea because of my cold. Mm, would you uh, would you do it for a day? Would you drink a raw egg for a day? It's I not like not a raw dangerous. egg for a day. I wouldn't drink it through a straw. Okay, okay. I was going to say it's not dangerous, is it? Kind of. Um, I think you need pasteurized eggs to not get salmonella, but then... There's only a chance of salmonella. You're not guaranteed to get salmonella in a raw egg. Okay. Um, okay, let me set up this sprint. Norsh, Norsh. I'll see what the cats are. Also, I stole this Flocus timer from you. You stole what? The Flocus timer. Oh, did you? I'm using it now, yeah. I like it. It's good. You're always copying me. Always. Down to the little pube. <laughs> and on that note, I will see you all in 25 minutes. We'll see you soon.
Hello. Good morning still. It is still morning, isn't it? It's not evening until 12. No, it's not afternoon until 12. It's definitely not evening for quite some time. Afternoon. That, that's what I meant. Kurt is stressing me out now in that sprint. Oh, no. Why? Uh, Breeze had like diarrhea on and off for, like the last week and now he's just like sending me pictures of a shit like look at this is this normal and I'm like leave me alone oh, the stress and anxiety over your baby being poorly because mm, I always do that thing as well where I'm like should I go to the vet because yeah. like I get anxious straight away and I'd rather just go to the vet and the vet tell me there's nothing wrong with her mm -hmm. um, but realistically it's diarrhea and I just need to feed her rice for a few days <laughs> she'll probably be fine <laughs> That's uh, what I usually have to do as well when I've got diarrhea, when I've got shit. Mm, just feed yourself rice for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so we asked where my phone case is from. It is an Otterbox one, I think. Is it Otterbox? Yeah. Um, and I got it from the Apple store. It also has a sperm in the back, which is the confetti from the Blink 182 yeah. show that I went to last week. Okay. Sperm doesn't I'm... come with the case, I put it in there. <laughs> Oh, damn, I think Emily wanted the sperm. Oh, damn. Well, I think Curtis, <laughs> Curtis does actually have some of the confetti. He does have some spur sperm. But... <laughs> I was wondering where that was going. <laughs> um, hello to everybody who's just joined us. Hi. I this is, get... this is dog ownership. This is me and Curtis have lots of discussions. Like, I'll just text him and be like, when was the last time she pooed? Oh what was the God. texture? Like, what are we dealing with today? Well, what was the actual colour? Was it like a deep brown or was mm. it just like a light brown? You know, it just things like we were you... talking. I did say sperm stuff. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was <laughs> um, yeah, no, we were discussing last night whether we should change a food, and I was like, but the box says we've declared war on poo, like, it should be good. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I mean, she's a Labrador. She puts absolutely everything in her mouth. So, mm. don't we all? I must be a Labrador too. Mm. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, what have you got? Coffee? Yeah, just another cappuccino. This is, but this is technically my first proper coffee because I don't count McDonald's coffee as coffee because it's it doesn't do anything for me. It's very. I thought you, you can taste the cardboard half the time. It just, it just doesn't really taste a whole lot like coffee. So this is my first proper coffee. No, so. I don't like McDonald's coffee. If I have to, I'll get a mocha, but mm. that's about it. Yeah, mochas are good because it's got the chocolate flavor. But mm. yeah, I, I decided to just go for a cappuccino this morning. But I mean, it did the job when I first got here on the street. It did the job, but I didn't feel too much like oh, this is the coffee that I needed today. So this is the coffee I needed. Might be the last one. I might just have the one, just like you. I might just do the one. We'll see. We'll see what it does for you. We'll see if it helps. We knew you were you were here, Kendra, so we adjusted the tone accordingly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we already knew, Kendra. This is exactly what you came for. It did the job, but at what cost? Mm. Uh, well, cost of one pound something i don't know how much co um, mcdonald's coffee costs now but that's what it cost and not like the radioactive damage to your insides from drinking mcdonald's uh, coffee i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure my insides have been damaged a good 10 years now at least this oh. is just i'm sure i'm fine i'm sure oh I'm curtis fine. is coming home with poopy dog bless you brie um, I mean, Brie must be guzzling it then. <laughs> this yeah, maybe don't have it. Is she behaving okay? Yeah. Still full of energy on the street. Excited and happy. No. Yeah, she's fine. Um, it's only really a concern if she's like behaving strangely and she's not. So I just need to. We don't have any chicken, I don't think, unless there's any frozen in the fridge from last time. But I think I cooked a whole bag. And by frozen in the fridge, I mean the freezer where you freeze things. Curtis is in the rooms before he gets ready to go to his party today. I'm just like <laughs> go through this list of activities. 
Well, he's going to make himself useful beforehand, and then he can really enjoy his night. It's a bit like Cinderella in that house. It's true. He's going to be We're getting done. dressed at home as well because he's leaving at three. The party starts at five or six, and I was like, "Excuse me." Mm-hmm. So um, I said, "You're going to be ready for bed at ten. <laughs> it starts <laughs> at like five. But yeah, he's going at three, so he's going to get changed here. Yeah. Nice. Um, so that'll That's... probably want makeup. So that'll probably be something that I have to help with soon. Yeah, okay. I wasn't here last time. I raided what you had. I was at a Lee Bardugo event in Leeds and you texted me and you said, I'm going out for Halloween. And I'm like, literally the only time you ever celebrate my favourite holiday. <laughs> mm. I did see um, Curtis's video uh, thumbnail. Was it like the Yu-Gi-Oh cards? He looked so happy on it. Oh, <laughs> he's a happy boy. Yeah. I Yu-Gi-Oh mean... cards, One Piece cards, were, were kindred spirits. Mm. <laughs> Did he sell the chicken at Ice Tunnel VM? You can get it's just a bag of chicken breasts we want. Frozen yeah. chicken breasts. I was gonna go out looking for la- liquid latex because I don't think I've got enough for hands, feet and forehead on in that vial. Okay. Um so yeah, just a bag of frozen chicken breasts. Iceland will probably be the cheapest. Yeah. We only had fake blood in Tesco, that was all we had in terms of like stuff. Oh. Well, I'm sure you'll find something out. I'll be fine. Um, this is um, rice is actually the go-to recommendation from the vet. Like, because I've took her when she was a baby, she had diarrhea constantly because she was just literally putting everything in her mouth. And even if she was eating things that was okay for her to eat, it was the first time that she'd ever eaten it, so it was still irritating her and giving her diarrhea. So, um, yeah, but they just tell you to put them on chicken and rice for a couple of days to firm everything up. Sometimes she gets a bit of probiotic yogurt or prebiotic yogurt, and a um. Scrambled egg as well. Oh, she's eat better better than I do, to be fair. I <laughs> know it's so annoying as well because I have to make her like cooked meals. So yeah. in one of the next sprints, when Curtis gets back, I'm gonna have to go roast chicken breasts and boil rice for a tea later. Bear, what a good mother you are. <sighs> Damn, I hope that Curtis does not show himself in his costume in camera later because he's. I don't even want to say what he's going as. He's going as a big willy, isn't he? No, he's going as Jesus. Oh. And the Catholic inside of me is, like, in pain. Like, it, it. I'm not even religious, but I was raised religious, and it hurts. Mm. And I've, like, I've made him, I've, like, told him that I do not approve of his costume. Yeah. So, so you don't want to see him? You don't want to see I, don't him want to see, I don't even want to look at him. <laughs> I mean, he has the hair down, so... And we've just been... <laughs> I said, what is this conversation, frozen chicken breast and liquid latex? And we were just talking about how he's got some spare sperm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were talking about sperm too. Anything goes on these sprints. Anything goes. Mmm, toilet water and um. socks. Ew. See, Curtis blames the fact that when we were carving pumpkins the other day, she was eating pumpkin off the floor. And I'm, oh my god, I need to get the dog. Get it. Entertain them, Gavin. Hold down uh, the floor. I'll, I'll flash. I'll flash. Do it. Yeah. Get your babes out. <laughs> I could. I will do that. Um, oh my gosh, Becca must be getting some kind of book mail. I'm also waiting for stuff as well, actually. So if my door knocks, I'll have to go and get that too. So bear with me. Kendra, are you calling me a minger? Are you calling me a minger? <laughs> Oh, you're calling Curtis and Minga. That's fine. That's fine. It was um just my fairy loot. I thought it would be some kind of boot box. Yes. I missed it yesterday because I was listening to 1989 with my headphones on. So uh, I couldn't hear the door. Uh, did you enjoy 1989? It's my least favourite Taylor's version, I think. But really? Yeah, I think that there's the, the actual tracks on the album didn't sound that different. Mm. Um, for me to have any like wire moments, and I also didn't, I'm not obsessed with any of the vault tracks either. Oh, that's a shame. I haven't listened to the vault tracks yet, but I'm not a big Swifty anyway, so it really doesn't mean that much to me. Mm, I am, I am a bit of a Swifty. Um, just fairy loot, excited. Well, it's the, um, I already knew it was coming, so it wasn't like exciting because I already knew what it was going to be. Yeah, you don't have that element of surprise. 
I have a couple of Amazon parcels coming today. So if I get a knock at the door and I have to run off, you'll have to forgive me. Exciting. I mean, this is just like normally not the sperm, but as an animal owner, like it, it just like we said, I just talk about this a lot. <laughs> Oh, my God. I literally just got an email saying every has successfully delivered your fairy loot. Oh, but it, it always goes to my mum's because uh, if I yeah, um, it'll probably go to someone on the street who I don't know. When I are you ever know. not here, though, Gavin? I mean, this is true. It's like, <laughs> I, for some reason, I seem to not hear the door because I don't know why. I just don't seem to hear it that often. People don't knock that loud. I don't even have a front, you know, the the letterbox. I don't even have a front thing on that anymore. Oh, so there's nothing they can use to knock louder. They ha yeah, they have to, like, physically bang on the door. And I don't think they like doing that. Yeah. So, I know. I just need a move. I've got five leaks. I need to... I just need a move. You add in food chat and regional accent chat. It's a standard stream. <laughs> well, at least we've ticked those off already I beg to differ Kendra my dog does not let me know when the door goes um, she just stays on the couch which is where she is right now which way is she the... there she is Oh. Um, but if the window cleaner is here damn do I know about it well that's handy <laughs> but not it's about really annoying yeah. cause I miss so many parcels if I'm upstairs because she just doesn't bother about the door but like random shit She's so, so selfish. She is. Oh, God, I don't even want to think about moving. Because I would love to change the rooms around. I would love to put the library where the living room is now and put the living room in here. Why? The living room's a bit bigger, for one, mm -hmm. and I'm, I've literally run out of space in here. I cannot fit another thing in here. Um... And two, I just want something, I want to change. I want mm. something different. I'm so bored. I feel you know, like I just want to change things up. See, I normally, when I do that, I normally paint something, but you can't really do that. <laughs> nah. I mean, I probably could paint over all the places where it's been leaking. That's boring, though, because you'll just be painting it white again, won't you? Pretty much, yeah. Or I just see if there is a, a house two doors down that was on the market, and I've asked about it, and they've got me on the list, but the couple that they're thinking of taking have offered 12 months rent. And obviously I can't do that. So oh. I'm just saying, because if I could just move two doors down, I just want to get out of this house. I, I don't mind the street. I don't mind the area. I just want to get out of this house because I don't want the landlord. I hate him. Mm. And I just want like a place that doesn't have leaks. Essentially. Sorry, I've got to with my feet. Um, so I just, it, it would be handy as well because then I could just, I could easily just take stuff two doors down, you know what I mean? I don't need, like, movers. Oh, I keep thinking that because I want to move around the corner where the houses are slightly bigger. Yeah, and maybe you could do that, but I love your house. Well, I mean, it would be very similar to this. They're just, um, they have, like, the houses around the corner don't look that much bigger. It's the street that I park on. Um, mm. But they have, like, two reception rooms, utility rooms like more bedrooms and bathrooms so it's just like a, a slightly bigger version of my house really because they're still all old houses as well wow oh i need to ask as well um did were you um self-employed for a while before you got a mortgage no i was employed when i got a mortgage you were just my because I, I was thinking oh should i just see if i can get a mortgage but i only will have two years worth of taxes completely done they, they ask for three normally, but because I um, had only had been like registered and paying tax for two years, they only they took two years. But also, I had um, my actual employment with that, so I don't know whether they allowed me to add two years because I also had traditional employment for like however many years it was. All right. Um, I'll give it a go. Just you should probably try and get a mortgage. It's cheaper. I mean, the interest rate isn't great at the minute. It's gone up a lot, so you'll be paying more than, like, I do. Mm. But in the long run, like, it's definitely cheaper. And they're, they're nicer houses as well that I've seen as well, so. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then, like, you can 
paying i mean it's expensive to have a house because we paid like four grand just to have the tops of the bay windows fixed and wow i've got i've had the joiner in this week with his brother who's a plasterer to give us a quote on plastering new skirting and coving for the bedroom wow. which is i imagine going to be close to a grand if not more Oh my god! And then I still need to redecorate and buy all the furniture for that room. And I need my—I'm getting a new front door at some point. My, on my kitchen tile replacing. Um, Did you try to put me off? Is this payback for the laser eye surgery thing? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you can get what is technically a bad credit mortgage with two years of books in the UK, but it means a slightly larger deposit. Well, I've got and I don't know if it helps, but I've got amazing credit because I get everything on credit and I pay back, and so my credit score is amazing. So I don't know if that would help. They um oh they don't count your student finance as credit as well. Oh, that's fine <clears throat> because they don't count it as a debt towards. Like if you've got debt, then they'll take that off like your like credibility, like your credit that's essentially. Fine. I mean, I I do have a lot of debt. I do have a lot of debt as well. To be fair. Maybe I should sort that out first. I'll throw out my debt first and then think about mortgage. Mm. I think as well, like having a house is expensive, but everything we fix on the house increases the value. Like our house is worth um, a, just a base valuation because of the, as long as it's in good repair, it's worth like 35 to 40,000 pounds more than we paid for it four oh. years ago. Wow. So it's increased in value in 10,000 by 10,000 pounds per year, plus the um, actual work that we've done on it. That's pretty decent. Mm -hmm. so and when all of the skirtings and stuff have been redone, it'll be it'll sell for more than it would now. Have you done anything with the basement? No, I was thinking about fix not fixing it, but turning it into a room so I can put my Peloton bike down there or put like the TV and stuff down there and have like a cinema room because obviously there'll be no light. Oh. Um, but I think when we were moved in, we asked about it. And it would need tanking, which is essentially waterproofing. Mm. Um, and they said that that would cost about £30,000, mm. which is a lot of money. It would add a lot to the value of the house. But um, I, I need to get married and stuff as well. So, Okay, well, that'll happen. Yes. Um, I'm just going to build a pillow for, I mean, <laughs> might as well. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? It's cheaper. I need, we're going to get a new bathroom at some point because we need an entire new bathroom and also the floorboards need fixing. Um, mm. So that will increase the value of ours a lot as well. Gosh. Yeah. They are still thinking about building new houses, but whereas I'm part of a community group to build a park instead, real life parks and rack. Oh, so and let's go over there. <laughs> they've made me an admin on the Facebook group, and I'm going to be participating in a Christmas bake sale to raise funds. Oh my gosh. I, I know. love that. Yeah, that is parks and rack. Well, I hope it turns into a park and not have more, more houses. Um, yeah, you go and you get a, I think it's some sort of agreement, I can't remember what it's called, that tells you how much money you can borrow, but you only borrow it, obviously, when you buy the house, because otherwise it's not a mortgage, it's just a loan. So, wait, so I, could I get an estimate of what I could possibly potentially borrow? Yeah, so, like, if you go to the bank, whichever bank you're going, you bank with is the one that we went to, they'll go through how much money you've made over the last however many years, um, and also any debt that you have and how much you can borrow. And then when you go, because without that, you can't make an offer on a house. Mm -hmm. And then you would start looking, I think it lasts 12 months, maybe agreement in principle. That's what it's called. Um, so you can use that for the next however many months to go to like viewings. And like, if you want to put an offer in, you can put an offer in. Um, for a first time buyer, I think you can make it a 5% deposit. That's what we did. Normally you'd have to do 10% if you're not a first time buyer, but I don't know if that's changed. And yeah, you can check online how much you can borrow. I mean, I've checked like my affordability and stuff and my affordability is good, but yeah, I think I would have to sort out the debts first and also pay the current tax 
year off as well. Mm, it's normally four and a half times what you make is roughly the amount that you can borrow. Okay. Okay. That's pretty good. I feel like tomorrow uh, <laughs> I've just got, I've just looked at my phone. I've got a text from Leanne that says, do not go to the vet, you anxiety monster. <laughs> 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 yeah, Bruce, carry on. She'll be getting pictures of Bruce Poe. Yeah, you know, I actually do that, and then Leanne can let us know if it's worth going or not. It's true. That's that's Leanne is my my at home vet. <laughs> oh, I didn't have any. They didn't take any bank statements for me. Keep oh. your spend before you go. Oh God. I want to have to you stop have motors grants, but they don't exist anymore unless you've already set one up. I had mine when I moved. They um, match the amount that you pay. So essentially like, we put a deposit of six thousand down. Yeah. So they matched like was it fifty percent of it or something? Got to, taken off the mortgage. I can't remember how it worked. Oh my god. All this money talk is so depressing. <laughs> it is. It does. Well, we've got a nice long sprint to mull over adulting. Oh, perfect. Uh, shall I try and work it out? So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 35, 40, 45? Yes. Well, if he said, shall I try and work it out? And then just counted every dot. Counted every dot. That, that's how I work it out. I use my fingers still. I count the dots. I'm glad I don't have to change book. That's the only thing. That's true. I need to maybe make lunch now because it's going to take me a while to make the bagels. Yeah, it is 12. I need to assemble them. I didn't have breakfast. I told Curtis to make me breakfast, and I was like, actually, wait. Are uh, you not starving? Um, No, actually. I only get hungry when I eat for the first time. So sometimes, like, if I'm busy making candles, I can get to 6 p.m. and realize I haven't eaten, and I'll only start getting hungry at, like, half four. But if I have breakfast, then I just want to eat all day. Fair. Mm -mm. You're starting now. We can't stop. <laughs> if we all put a thousand in, we can all buy and live in the same house. Oh, that would be beautiful. That's a big, I mean, that would be £400,000. So you could buy, where I live, where the houses are cheap, you could buy like a four-bedroom house with that. So I don't think 400 people would fit in it. Probably Maybe. not. Though. Probably not. But somebody would have a very nice house. Yeah, me. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> right. I'm going to sprint. Curtis isn't back yet, but I'm sure he'll be back by the time I make food. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'll see you all in 45, then. See you soon.
Hello. Hi, I've gone back to audiobooking because it doesn't matter if I read a physical, it doesn't matter if I read audiobook, I'm still confused. <laughs> what are you reading it for? It's for a, a video I'm doing where I'm reading the like two horror books from each decade. Um, sort of like era's tour of horror. So I'm starting with 1900 to 1909. So I read The Willows. Wait, how many decades are you, are you doing a decade per video? Yeah. Oh, right. I was like, are you literally going to do 100 years in one video? Like, what the fuck? You know what, actually? Now you mention it. <laughs> you know you could have done that, but you should have done one video per decade and then you could have done one long video. Yeah, I should. But yes, I'm going to do one. Yeah, I will do one per decade because I was going to try and do just like one book from each decade. So then that would have been like, because it would have been from 1900 to 2000, I wanted to kind of do. So that mm. would be like, probably like 10 books or something. But I decided to do two from each decade. But yeah, it's, I've never read Lovecraft before, but it feels lo like Lovecraft. Damn. I know. Well, that sounds like a horrible video. So I'm glad you're filming that, not me. Yeah. Well, fortunately, I've got a fun little silent movie skit at the start of it. That should make that fun. But other than that, it's going to go downhill afterwards. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I made my bagels in that chat. They were, oh, they were good. Did you make them and eat them as well? Yeah. Quick. Do you want me to show you a picture? Yes, 100%. You got me in the mood for bagels now. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's literally what bacon and cheese in the middle. I mean, bacon and egg in the middle. Yeah, so you put, like, a sprinkle of cheese and then you put half a bagel on top and then in the hole you push, like, a piece of bacon and in the groove you put an egg yolk and then you sprinkle cheese on top. I don't think you're talking about bagels anymore, are you? <laughs> I like I putting the egg yolk in the groove. It's my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> now that's giving a whole new meaning to yeast infection. Oh. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they only take 15 minutes to bake as well, and they are very nice. Bake as in, like, the oven? Yeah. That's you why. put them in the oven for 15 minutes. Oh, you can do them in the air fryer, actually, for less time. Oh, well, perfect. But if I did put it in the oven, would I put it top shelf, middle shelf? Um, I had it on the middle to start off with and then moved it to the top just because the cheese wasn't going crispy. Mm. But you okay. could do maybe... 10 minutes at the top. You just need to make sure that your egg's cooked. Okay. Oh, I'm probably going to give myself salmonella on there. Mm, probably. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, God, you have to separate the yolk, and we know you don't have a good history. Oh, I, I can't. I still can't do it to this day. <laughs> I can't do it. It's too hard. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to click on that one. That just jumped dramatically. There we go. I'm gonna have to go to the shop store for bagels. Would recommend. I have bagels left over, so I'll be making it tomorrow while Curtis is still out. Oh. Well, maybe during the next one, I might nip, nip to the little Tesco that's next to me, see if they sell any bagels. Maybe that can be my my dinner. Maybe, maybe. It doesn't. It's not hard to put together, and doesn't take very long, so you should be able to manage it. You would say that. You would say that. Remember when I got Hello Fresh and I had to keep putting in the group chat? What do I do? How do I do this? It was the burning pasta for me. Like, is this normal? And I'm like, why would you think? Why would you think that that was normal? I couldn't believe I burned pasta, but I didn't. I couldn't believe that you thought it was supposed to be outside of the pan. Yeah, I thought it was like the way I put it in, and they were just like spread outside the pan. I was like, well, I can't break it so it's just gonna have to be the way it is and i just put it in and it just burned oh. and it might fall out that hello fresh wasn't thorough enough in the instructions if you ask <laughs> uh how many books have i read so far this month i've read 10 i dnf'd one and this is my 12th wow 11th. and you, you actually read proper books as well yeah <laughs> so. one of them was um a wheel of time book Oh my god! Uh, yeah, you've uh, you've got me beat one hundred percent. Um, so he put he put the spaghetti in the pan, and you know how like once the bottom gets soft, you put the rest of the spaghetti in and like curl it round. Gavin didn't; he just left the bottom boiling, and the rest was like burning where it was touching the edge of the pan. And he I, sent I, a picture of like black bubbly pasta and was like is this normal and i'm like when have you ever eaten black bubbly pasta 
Evan, like literally when. Wonder I can find a photo of that actually. I might have been pre me having an iPhone to be fair. Oh, here we go. No, I'm already there. We go. There we go. Oh, oh god, yeah. Well, to be fair, in my defense, HelloFresh didn't tell me to put it in all in the water. It just said <laughs> put it in the pan. It didn't say put it in the water. Oh my god. <laughs> the caption that says, Was I supposed to break the pasta up? I'm starting to have regrets. <laughs> <laughs> it literally didn't it didn't tell me to break it up or anything. With the burn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I never had pasta before. Okay. It was hard. You made something else that was okay. You did okay with the fish, didn't you? Yeah, there was something I accidentally put everything in the sink. I think I was supposed to sieve it or something. Are you just threw it in the sink. I put it all in the sink. <laughs> it was like, clean. Yeah, I can't remember what it was though. Oh, this maybe stick to pot noodles. Oh yeah, I think I actually got one in the. Covered. I could have. You're offending the Italians in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could never date an Italian. Well, actually, maybe I could because then they could cook for me. Can confirm that um, I always think about Gavna when I make spaghetti. Yeah, you know what not to do. Yeah. Oh, but so you... want burnt microwave spaghetti hoops. Oh. I've never had microwave spaghetti hoops before. Interesting. You don't? Do you make them on the hob? What spaghetti hoops? Yeah. I don't make them in general. I, <laughs> I just the things that I have now are frozen things. I either put in the air fryer or sometimes I put them in the oven. Wow. I know. I love cooking. I think if I had a bigger kitchen, I would too. If I had your kitchen, I would love cooking. Mm. It's yours is a nice kitchen. It is. It is. It could be. I realize. Oh, you know how I've got that cabinet in the center, and I always complain that I can't. I've got no surfaces to work on because mm -hmm. it takes the counter space. The reason why I don't have any counter space to work on is just because I'm supposed to have an island in the middle of the kitchen, and I use it for my candles. Mm -hmm. I had that realization like last week, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> it isn't a design flaw. I'm the problem." Because wow. when we she already had the island pressed against the wall, so I've just left it there and never really thought about it. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's my that's my chopping sur um, surfaces. Wow, and you call me dumb? I know it's true. Well, <laughs> I, I I have my Gavin moments, as I like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> just like whoops to the Gav. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever properly overcooked pasta. I've never had mushy pasta. I've had it where like it's probably a couple of minutes past its prime, but I don't think I've ever like properly ruined it from overcooking. Yeah, that doesn't sound too great. Overcooked. Mm. I just need to make more pasta, I guess. I haven't had pasta in a while. <laughs> is it since you um oh, <laughs> learned the last one? How many HelloFresh boxes did you get? By the end of it, I think I had about, I did it for about three months by the mm. end. I've got quite a few recipes, like, still. Yeah. Um, like, not the ingredients, obviously. <laughs> but, like, the, the cards and things that I could just go out and buy. Like, the ones that I really did enjoy, I could just go out and buy the ingredients for and just do them myself, I guess. Do you still do HelloFresh? Yeah. Yeah. I have um, a drawer full of recipes. I keep the best ones. Mm. And then throw out the the bad ones. I should have done that. Yeah, I like the average ones. All the ones that we get are the same like every couple of weeks, so I don't need to keep all of the cards. Well, what if you end up forgetting that you had it and you forgot that you didn't like it? And that doesn't really happen. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fussy eater though as well. Like I was I was raised in a house where you got what you were given and if you didn't like it, well tough shit. So I never there's nothing that I'm like so offended by that I actually would not eat it. Like I don't like tomato pasta. I don't like tomato sauces, but if you gave me a tomato pasta, like I would eat it. Yeah, so. you wouldn't turn your nose up at it. Uh, no, I'm the same. 
my mom used to make a uh, kebab from the freezer like she'll get microwavable kebabs and give us that as children oh, yeah. so now i literally would eat anything because anything's better than that that's true i um have a real like i'm not i'm a bit snobby about like cupboard food so like i don't eat anything tinned apart from like rice pudding mm. tuna mm. and i think that's about it for things that we've got tinned anything that's tinned that's not supposed to be I won't eat. Uh, the ultimate like food for me that I would never ever eat again that reminds me of being poor in my childhood is sausage and beans in a tin. Oh really? I was just literally just about to ask what about beans and sausage and beans? I don't. Uh, tomato sauce. Mm. If I have beans, I drain them through a slotted spoon but to get it's... most of the tomato sauce off. And it's just no point in having the beans. I like the texture of beans. Like I like beans in Mexican food and stuff. I just don't like the tomato sauce on baked beans. Yeah, fair. I do like it in Mexican food too. I don't like it on its own though. It has to be with something else. Also, um, something that I used to hate when I was a kid is when you have like egg and chips and the egg is the protein. Like an egg is a side, it's not a replacement for me if you're a meat eater for me. I'm like egg and chips is not a meal. <laughs> but that's why I eat properly all the time. Like I never I don't I never make like a lunch food for dinner. Like every dinner I eat is a full meal. Wow. Yeah. Couldn't be me. Wouldn't be me. You like think... tonight is my the the laziest I will get with food, and it's because when Curtis is going out, I have girl dinner, which is just chicken wings and hash browns for me. So I eat like um Sounds good. I eat frozen food when Curtis isn't here because that reminds me of being a student when I used to literally just eat plates of chicken from Iceland. And then put them in the freezer, unfreeze it do all this i used to only make stir fries so i've never made a stir fry since being a student so you used to cook properly when you were a student but not anymore well ish ish oh. <laughs> i feel like i do need to sort my life out i feel like i'm just like too busy to like sort myself out but i'm not really i'm just lazy i like my home comforts too much i like to be able to just sit there and not have to worry about I just wish I didn't have to eat, honestly, sometimes. I'm like, I could be doing something more productive with my time right now. I love food. I don't love food, but I don't want to make the food. I don't want to spend time making food. I don't like to think of what food I'm making, which is why I like HelloFresh, because I like to make the food. I like to just walk into the kitchen and just make the food. But I don't, I hate it when I don't know what's for dinner and I'm sat here at midday trying to work, but I'm just getting anxious because I don't know what's for dinner. And you don't know like what combinations to make out of what you've already got. Yeah. Or, yeah. Like my mum was, I wouldn't consider myself a good cook because my mum was an intuitive cook. Like my mum could open the fridge, look at what she's got and make a meal. I can't do that. I have to find a recipe and buy all of the ingredients to make a meal. And then I end up with lots of bits left over, which is why I get hella fresh. Yeah. My mum used to send me um, home with... Uh, like do you know the massive butter tubs that are like a kilo oh yeah full of like pea and ham soup to put in the freezer nice ain't this the truth <laughs> yeah i'm like i i don't eat that much during the day um but i don't eat good when i do you know what i mean um yeah, I like meals that you can cook in one pot as well. Yeah, I get, you know, that's another reason why I stopped HelloFresh as well, is I was getting stressed, thinking, oh, this needs to come out at this time, and that needs to stop at that time, and I just get myself all confused. I'm just, I, I think that I like things that you have to focus on that stop you from thinking about things that you shouldn't be thinking about when you're doing it. Mm. So I like cooking because I have to think about cooking if I'm keeping track of times and stuff, so I'm not thinking about what I'm going to be doing in 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it is very distracting, true. Yeah. But again, if I had your counter space, if I had your kitchen space, then most likely yes. Mm. But I would, if I did HelloFresh again, I would stick to the easy, like I'm talking bare minimum recipes, rather than the ones that require this and that and that and this. And... They've actually um, added a bunch of like 10, 15 minute meals recently. As like you know how they have them things where they do like sometimes it's like craft burger time and sometimes it's like winter warmers um they've added loads of like 10 15 minute meals that are like three steps 
Well, that could actually work in my favor. Um, I'll think about it, but I do need to start eating better. I really do. It's nicer because I used to default to either the same meals over and over again or frozen food just because it's easier. Um, which is why HelloFresh works for me because it, it takes the, the thinking out of cooking, which is, uh, to me, that's the issue. I don't like meal prepping because I don't like eating the same thing over and over and over again. Like, if I make something that's big enough to have leftovers, it's normally, like, two portions per person. So, like, I'll eat it again later in the week, but I, I'm not eating it every day. Yeah, I would get very bored very easily with that, too. Not bad. We've got 40 minutes. Oh, sorry, hey. Karen. Uh, is that 40 minutes? It is. God, you're so good. I'm getting better at counting. <laughs> I hate not... the name that comes with cooking. I would recommend a man for this. <laughs> a man or a dishwasher? Um, same thing in my house. <laughs> I mean, you can't fuck a dishwasher, can you? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Now the man wants a dishwasher, and I'm like, we don't have space for a dishwasher. You can't have a dishwasher. Mm. Um, well, Curtis does the job well enough, I'm sure. This is, see, there we go. We've got a dishwasher in the chat, and we've got a cooker that makes per match made in heaven. <laughs> does I would cook. That would be the dream. Maybe you need two men, Gav, one that cooks, one that cleans. One cooks, one cleans, and I can just do everything else. That's like <laughs> I like hoovering. I like to hoover. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, oh, no, I like laundry because laundry is doing work without doing work. You put the laundry in the washing machine and you sit for an hour and do nothing and then you get it out and you hang it up and then you just don't do it. You wait for it to dry. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, oh, Steph, we'll find a use for you somewhere. Yeah. We'll, we'll, do the the <laughs> <laughs> we'll find something. Um... Okay, let's get on with... I need to actually read something. I think the entire time I've been here, I've read 49 pages, 39 pages. Wow, and this is going to be our third, third or fourth Four. spread. <laughs> really? I need some romance as well, like it's not even hard. The first sprint, I was just settling in and I was quite distracted. The second one, Curtis was sending me pictures of shit. Mm -hmm. The third mm -hmm. one, I cooked... And now maybe I'll read. <laughs> maybe we'll say. Yeah. Um, comedy, uh, comedy. This is the fourth one. Like what? I know, right? Right. Mm. I'll see you in forty minutes. I'll see you later.
Hello. Hello. I had to turn off my heater thing. I, I can I show you like this? It's really loud, so I can only turn it on while we're sprinting. Uh, so usually when we're chatting, I'm usually quite cold, but I do it for you. Well, so with your um, central heating? Oh, I don't like putting it on because it like it eats away at it, and then it only stays hot for like five minutes, like after mm. turning it off, and then it just like leaves. It it evaporates. Uh. So it doesn't last well enough. Damn. Yeah. I know. I I just need to get out of this house. I'm sorry to bring it up again. I'm a broken record, but ah, uh, I'm sick. I'm absolutely sick. Yeah, I don't blame you. Mm. Well, I blame myself, honestly. If I had have just done it, like if, last year, if I hadn't have asked my friend to be a housemate for a little while. Yeah, that wasn't good. Because mm -hmm. honestly, as soon as the contract ended in July last year, I would have just looked somewhere else straight away. But I mm. just had him moving in. So it wasn't good. Did, um, how long is your contract now? Oh, it's just month to month now. Oh, okay. So I could literally leave. Well, I feel like, because he's such an awful landlord, he would make me have to give notice or whatever. Yeah. And which is fine. Like I'll give him a month's notice, but I bet you I'd I'd pay for like say November. Say if I found something that's still in November, I'll pay rent for November and I'll be like, Oh, um, I'm moving out at the end of the month. He'll be like, No, you'll have to pay for next month as well. I just oh, feel yeah. like that. I just feel like yeah, he's just gonna piss fart about and he's just Awfully so nasty. And he, but he apparently lives in London, so that's why I've never seen him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, Ash. <laughs> I love how this is what Ash enters the chat with. <laughs> Moving back his basement, yeah. I should. I should be a little gremlin. Like, uh, I'm the nasty landlord. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at least you're hot. That's true. And that's how I know that you like your leash. Mm-hmm. I like it. <laughs> I like a, a nice tight leash. Don't let go too far. <laughs> um, I can't remember what I was going to say. I've read more of my book, though. I've read 70 pages in total now, so I've read a lot more in the last sprint than I have in the three sprints that came before. Wow. Oh, wow. have you not finished that book yet? It's only small. <laughs> it is only small, isn't it? Uh, I have 12 minutes left of the audiobook. Look at you go. Well, I'm going to have to read some like essays and stuff. It makes me feel like when I was back at uni reading these kinds of books and stuff, I feel like I need to read some essays to understand some of it. It's it's just been very cosmic. And I, this is like the first time I've read something like that. So it's. Is this the 1900 to 1909 decade? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it came out in 1905. Yeah. So it's an old one. It's older than me. Can you believe it? I mean, there's not much out there that is older than you, Gav, but that book's so I managed it. You little witch. <laughs> I need to go more places with you because when I go places, I tend to be the oldest person there and it's very upset. Yeah, I see. I see how it is. I see how it is. You get an invite to something. <laughs> yeah. come, come on then, invite me to something then. I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the oldest person there for you. Yeah, thanks. You're doing me a solid. Mm -hmm. Are you enjoying your books? I don't think Gavin is. I think he's very confused. I'm just confused. It's like I feel like it's been very interesting, but when I'm I'm worried about talking about it because I don't really know what to say without sounding stupid, you know? Yeah. It's like, how do I review something I don't really understand? Yeah, especially because, um, but you've done it to yourself. This is why I don't make videos like the one that you're making. <laughs> yeah. I just you're wanna... inviting people to call you stupid. I know, right? Literally, that's I barely read classics as well because I'm going to be like, oh, I didn't really understand that. But like, obviously, I didn't understand that. It's an old book. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I just wanted to do a skit. I wanted to do a silent movie skit. This was all I could think of to do for it. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do for every decade then? Because in 1910, you're still in the era of I silent on... movies. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should skip decades. Maybe I might skip around. Like, I'll still do each decade, but I'll skip around a little bit to change it up. So, like, mm -hmm. I can skip to the 80s or something and do, like, 
some like home video VHS tape kind of 80s style thing. It's really then, uh, me doing it out of order. Like making I know, that, this is the thing. I don't, I don't think I will do it out of order, but I don't know what I'm going to do for the next one. To be fair, the silent movie skit that I'm doing ends on a cliffhanger. So I could just continue the silent movie thing. It, it, it does have a cliffhanger, so it does have a story. Gavin, Gavin, Gavin does be suffering for his art. <laughs> yeah. Um, a. I have no idea how old Leon is. I've never asked. I don't know if it's a rude question to ask people how old they are. So I've never asked. Leon I, I just always assume the same age as us. To be honest, I, I or should we do assumptions? I assume that Leanne is thirty-six, maybe. That's a, Between no, thirty-four bad. and thirty-six is my guess. Maybe. I've got Aaron's here now. Hey, hi, Aaron. Hey. Miss I am really liking you again. I've always liked you, Aaron. I've never stopped liking you. No, the book that I'm reading, Gavin. Oh, yeah. Well, I can't say because you've covered it up. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. <laughs> Day six going on ninety six. I was gonna, I was gonna guess ninety six. To be fair, I'm kidding. she's I'm looking kidding. a bit, a bit grey around the temple. <laughs> oh. In the chat about ages. Uh, I ever assume that most people are either my age or like mid twenties, which is no longer my age, which is very upsetting. Yeah. Oh. You know the thing where you have to fill in on a on a survey, like your age range. Yes. Yeah, it's sad. Sad times for me. What are we I'm... in now? Are we in what is it twenty no, we're in like twenty nine to thirty four or something, aren't we? It's usually yeah. Or sometimes it's been like thirty to forty five. That oh. I have. Yeah. <laughs> I have to click that a lot. <laughs> it hurts, it hurts. It's fine. The way aging gracefully. We are. Oh, I was doing my eyebrows yesterday. My forehead, not yesterday, this morning, and my forehead was wrinkling. Like when I was like with the, when I was like, oh no. Oh. Uh, well, to be fair, I feel like my skin is like still so good. I might be getting gray hairs, but my skin is like. Considering you don't eat well, your skin is like flawless. I don't eat well. All I do is moisturize. Like literally, all I do is moisturize. That's it. Well, I wash my face and like moisturize, but mm. like. That's all I do. And I don't eat well. I don't know what it is. And good genes might be. It might be good genes. Yeah, I um have a, a skincare routine to keep my skin nice. But um I'm still I'm considering the mid 30s Botox. You know, if you have you heard the rumor about Botox, if you start getting Botox in your 30s, you don't age apparently. Oh, oh see now you've started me off. Now I'm gonna have to look into this. It was Jamie who told me that, but I feel like now is a bit too soon to get Botox because I absolutely don't need it. But I'm thinking, like, for my 35th, if y'all want to send me a Botox voucher. <laughs> I, I was thinking, of what what could I get back for her 35th? I was thinking that, to be fair. Because you, uh, you've got everything planned in advance. Like, you you know what you're getting me for 31, 32, 33, and 34, but 35 <laughs> was close. Yeah, but 35 had to be special. Why a voucher? Why don't I just pay for it all? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm working on growing walls to go with the grey and then I can just transcend into true bug witch. So for Leanne's 37th, shall we go halves on some warts for her? Yes. We'll get you some warts. <laughs> I don't know how much they will cost, but we're going to do it. <laughs> oh, 35 to 44. Yeah, that, that one is going to make you feel old. It honestly depends on what website you're putting your age in. Sometimes they've been so random. It's true. Like, the age range is like the gap is usually like quite big sometimes. But I can only I'm getting my last rail card next year, and then I can't have any more rail cards. Oh no! Yeah, oh. unless I get the two together one, and then I can only go places with Curtis. So essentially, you're allowed discounted rail fare until you're thirty, and then you can't have it until you're married, or <laughs> like going somewhere with somebody constantly. Oh my gosh! Sometimes you just want to get get away from the other half sometimes. It's true, it's true. Like, awesome. if I go on the train somewhere, I normally go by myself. Mm. I'd probably be better getting a two-together card with Ashley. <laughs> do you not think, yeah, do you think it would even be worth it? Like, just pay full price. 
Is it worth it anymore? Expensive, aren't they? They're not cheap. Well, yes, a lot of them times are. But then I think I don't really travel that much to justify it. I mean, maybe you would be able to justify it, but I don't know. I just usually just do it in the morning. I thought even, whoa, you pay for your trains in the morning. Oh, no, no. I mean, like, <laughs> as soon as I know what I'm doing, I will know it. Mm, maybe sometimes a week before or something. Jesus Christ, I book my trains three months in advance most of mm -hmm. the time. Like, I don't pay more than £30 to go to London. What if you decide to go to London next week? Well, I got invited to an event on the 3rd, and I'm not going because it's next week. Well, you could still do it. Just book a ticket right now. Yeah, I could, but <laughs> it's next week. It's not far enough in advance. <laughs> So I know to self, invite you three months in advance when I want you to take the train. That's... Oh, no, just in general. <laughs> if you want to see me. It's good. If I want to see three, I need a three months notice. <laughs> Look, I'm not even playing. Like, I am doing something for the entire first three weeks of February. In the first three weeks of February, I have a holiday, four gigs, and I'm going to London to see Hades Town in the first three weeks of And it's February. far off Feb as well, isn't it? Oh, not for me. <laughs> it's fucking hell for me. Why did I make all these plans, Feb? <laughs> oh, no. You're doing this to yourself, I'm afraid. <laughs> it is, it is. All right, let's roll for another sprint. I'm excited to get back to what I was doing because it was in the middle of a sex scene. Oh, oh, my. Can you read it out for us? Uh, not this time, no. Damn it. Ugh. I don't have any marshmallows. <laughs> oh, oh, what, it involves marshmallows? No, because I did the chubby smutty thing where I read out sex scenes, remember? Gosh, yes. Oh, that was a blast from the past. It was. I can't believe you forgot. Oh, well, I forgot everything. Go on. Yeah, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 35 again? Yep. <laughs> not bad, not bad. I should have known like five, five is 25 and then just add 10. Just Somebody um, hacked it in the chat and said if you times it by 10 and then half it. So like that's... obviously if you roll a 10, that's 100 and then half it is 50. Ah. Oh yeah, that would make... Oh, maybe that will help me in the future. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> he doesn't even know how to go past a <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, how am I supposed to remember? Shit. How am I supposed to remember anything? Oh, God. Right, I'll see y'all in 35 minutes. <laughs> I'll say, hopefully you finish your book. But, I mean, I've got 153 pages left, so I doubt it, but hopefully you'll finish yours. <laughs> we'll see. You've got 12 minutes, we'll see. <laughs> see you <laughs>
Oh, baby, baby. Were you singing Britney? I was. Ever since reading her memoir, I've been non-stop listening to her songs again. I used to, well, I still love Britney, of course, but I used to <laughs> listen to her music constantly back in the day. I knew um, that you did. We walked past it at some point, and I said something about you. Hmm. And I said, does Gavin even like Britney? And I'm like, he's a gay man that was born in like the 90s. I'm pretty sure he has to like Britney. It's <laughs> written in our DNA. <laughs> It's in our DNA. Yeah. Of course I do. Um, but yeah, I was just singing along to some Britney. I finished my book like very quickly. The last 10 minutes of the audiobook was just the bloopers from the oh. audiobook. So I was like, oh, I only had like two minutes left. What kind of horror was that? It's like an adult. Well, I don't, they didn't have like adult books, did they at the time? They were just books. Yeah. To be honest, like, because this is supposed to be horror, but it is like early concept of like what constitutes as horror. So it was more like um, psychological, a lot more um, cosmic like Lovecraft. And it's just a lot of it's like, it, it's all monologue. It's all monologue. And I, I mean, it was fine. It was good, but like, just can't understand it. It, it had too, too big a concept, mm. but I mean, it, it, it was good. It was good. But yeah, I was a bit surprised by the bloopers at the end of the audiobook. I was like, hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I do want to listen yeah. to the um Britney memoir, but I know that I'll listen to it. So I, I'm I only have one audiobook at once and I'm listening to Slayers right now, so it'll have to wait. Fair. I was gonna do the audiobook, but Britney doesn't do the audiobook. It's Michelle Williams, but I think Britney does the prologue or like the start of it or something. There's, there's something because it says I looked on Audible and it's like Michelle Williams and Britney. Yeah, I think she does the, the, the first chapter or like the prologue because she didn't want to re-traumatize herself with what she wrote. So understandable, understandable. But also, if I run, it's because I'm the next stop on the Amazon thing. What have you got coming today? So my, before a Wicked Witch costume came, that was mm -hmm. what came before from Royal Mail. In Amazon, I got- you get up with a costume in your hand and I was like, please tell me you're not coming back dressed or something. <laughs> like, please. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Oh, he's here. He's here. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Oh, okay, yeah, she did the opening. I do, um, I kind of get why she didn't. I actually didn't expect her to, really. It's weird. Like, I knew when I was looking for the audiobook that it, I probably wasn't going to be her doing it. But typically, I do read nonfiction, like memoirs and stuff in audio because the person does tend to narrate it. Um, but then it just takes me a while to get to them because I have like only one audio at once, if that. Oops, Sophie's finished it. Hey, you finished it in that sprint? Yes. Awesome. Oh, she explains in the prologue why she doesn't want to read it. Ah. Uh, fair. What's in this one then? Uh, this one might be. Oh, this one's a blue. Oh. Have they sent me the DVD by accident? Oh no. Oh no, I think it's the Blu-ray, but usually Blu-ray is like blue. It looks like a DVD, but it's the One Piece film. That reminded me, Curtis said, when I was making dinner, he said he forgot to ask you about Lorcana when you were talking about cards. About what? Morgana? Lorcana is the Disney TCG. Oh, Lorcana. Oh yeah, I want to collect those. I We've do want to get the, them. Um, a couple of starter decks and stuff for it. Where did you get them from? Like Waterstones or something? Um, he pre-ordered them from somewhere. Oh, he pre-ordered them from the game shop that he goes to. Ah. Okay, maybe I should do that then. Because I do think Waterstones have some, but I, I it's already they're cost really hard to get hold of. I think I think they're sold out everywhere. Well, I'm not sure if they're not sold out now, now that it's been a while, but I know that everyone's been struggling and Ryan uh, works at Sainsbury's and he's getting annoyed because every couple of days someone comes in and asks for Lorcana and he's like, I don't fucking have any Lorcana. Can't get it. It's the same with the One Piece cards. Fortunately, I have one of the only One Piece card game stores, like official card game stores in the world, is actually like in the Metro Center in Gateshead. Um, and that's like, there's only there's only two outside of Japan. That's I think so they've just... Oh shit, I wasn't supposed to do that. Um, he keeps doing it without me wanting to do it. Um, well, there's one in Gates. I think one just opened up in Manchester, I think. But yeah, these are the only two stores outside of Japan. Wow. So 
I can get the One Piece cards, but I've spent about like two thousand pounds on One Piece cards. Damn. I, I mean, know. Curtis has probably spent the same on Yu Gi Oh, but spread over like five years instead of just like. Yeah, mine's just been like ten months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's an addiction, honestly, with the cards. Once you start, you just can't stop. Oh my god, it is. Have you heard of whatnot? What not? It's like a, it's an app. They sent me an email in December to collab with them, and I didn't understand what it was, so I di I ignored it. But they sent one to Curtis, and he's took them up on it. So it's essentially like live shopping. Um, so they want him because they want to. They they don't have any Yugi Shubers for Yu Gi Oh um, um. in the UK, so like they're desperate for them. So they do him like a really good deal where like he has affiliate links, and if you sign up through his link, you get ten pound credit to spend on whatnot. But it's like so it's live shopping so he it, it's so addictive like it's literally like so wild it reminds me of you know back in the 90s when everyone was obsessed with shopping channels and stuff and oh, yeah. yeah. because like he they do rip it and ship it so he buys a box of booster cards and people bid on the packs before they've been opened and then he opens them so like oh. you know how you have like different rarities of cards like secret rares and stuff he was doing one the other day and somebody spent 20 pound on one booster pack because there was one it had to have an ultra rare in it because only one ultra rare had been pulled in the entire box and it was the last pack of the box like it is oh. wild oh i can imagine and that would probably be worth some money as well that that card yeah it was um i think it was a 50 pound card that they paid 20 pound for the pack but you pay for the packs without knowing what's inside them that's that's interesting but it's like an auction site, so I was thinking, like, if they reach out to me again, I might do it because I've got a massive on haul stack over there. Yeah, I, I like, auction them. I want the discount code. Oh, so for I'll... Curtis, mm. I'll get him to send it to you. It's um, you get you get ten pound. Yeah, you get ten pound in credit to spend on whatnot. Oh my god! So I spent it on cards, like in his first auction, because like to support him. So nah. <laughs> it felt well, illegal, but I was like, I just wanted to spend the ten pound credit that I only got because of his link, you know? Yeah, of course. Um, of course. Yeah. Do you want to say what I got? Oh yeah, go on. As well. Um I got the murder in the family book. Mm -hmm. Have you see this one around? I know, I don't think I have. It's like it's got so many different like things in. I like that. Me too. Me I don't too. like the cover though. The cover's horrible. It just looks yeah, like the cover is just like it's a box standard thriller cover, isn't it? It's like mm. I would not pick that out in a liner. Um, I'm going to cover the author's name because it's a dead name now. Mm. But I got Black, Black Iris. Yep. I got Black Iris, um, and then also I got Haunted by Chuck Paller. No, or something. Cody recommended this one, so I had to get it. No. She said it's effed up. She said it's very effed up. And if Cody said it's fucked up, then it's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. I asked Cody for a list of recommendations. She sent she sent a good list. Um, and she put the Mindfuck series on there. And I'm like, I, I didn't like the Mindfuck series, girl. I didn't like it. So now I don't trust your list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared now. <laughs> I need to place a Waterstones order, but I'm one pound off free shipping. So I won't place it until I can think of another book. Maybe this one? You'll have to tell me if it's good first. Yeah, I don't want to read it like ASAP because apparently it's you have to solve the case as well as the actual character in this. Oh. So like you're given all the clues and all of the evidence from like like all of the transcripts and everything. Like there's even like fingerprints and like profile cases of you know potential suspects. Or... I don't know if I'd love that or hate that. I know it's. it looks like it's really intimidating and stuff, and I don't know if I'm going to vibe with it, but I'm interested. I'm very interested in solving something myself and seeing if I can do it. I no, it's I'm thinking about that. I'm like, I don't, I'm ordering, I need to order some sequels. Mm. I could just order, I've just thought, I could just order the next Wheel of Time book, because I need Wheel of Time book six mm. and the sequel to The Demon King by Cinder William Chimer. Mm. But that comes to £24. I need to spend £25 for free shipping. Mm. But I could just get book seven in Wheel of Time. That would make... Oh, no. I remember why. Because you can buy um, the box sets in sets of three. So I want books seven, eight, and nine in a box set. But I don't have book six because the box that I originally got was one to five. 
Oh, okay. so I want six, and then eventually I want to box that with the next well, that, three. That's a pain in the ass. But you also want to get it over thirty pounds because then you can get like the three stamps as well. So I think they just kind of get paper back. Oh no, yeah. it's okay because I'm spending my points. That's the oh. point of it okay. otherwise i would just if this happens with waterstones like normally i pre-order from waterstones and then if i want one book i get it from amazon okay because it's just like i don't want to pay the shipping and waterstones isn't close to me to go pick it up yeah. um but because i pre-order so much i have like 60 pounds in points so i now don't want to pay for books when i've got 60 pounds no in points. Oh, no, I, but so I don't want to buy like five Wheel of Time books and spend all of my points at once because that seems sad. Like it's not exciting to do that, I feel. Mm. Remember the days when I had discount? Oh, that was good. Best times of my life. Do you know how much money I spend on books now because you selfishly left your job? I know, I know. I regret it, okay? It's my biggest regret. My biggest regret. <laughs> I would have suffered retail just to get us that discount. It was a beautiful, beautiful discount. It was. If I had to stay there another five years, I would be able to leave and keep the discount for 10 years after I left, but only if I stayed there for 10 years. Wait a minute, say that again. So if you stay in Waterstones for 10 years and you mm. leave, you get to keep your discount card for 10 years after you leave. Wow. I know. That's why so many staff members are trying to get to 10, 10 years before Damn. leaving. Like, and there's somebody who I worked with who has been there, I think, seven years by the time I left. And she's like, right, three more years, three more years. I'm like, I wish, but I would have had to have stayed at, like, is it another five or six years I had to had to stay? I can't remember, but I was like, I, I just can't. I can't. Sometimes I feel like picking up a cheeky little four-hour Saturday shift at Waterstones just for the discount card. <laughs> I mean, you could. They're probably looking for someone. I know, but it'll be Christmas temp, so I'm like, the last thing I want is to be schlepping out to York in December. True, true. And they would always try and make you do more than you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So. And I'm a fucking mug, so I would not end up like with no YouTube channel because I'm working at Waterstones full time. So like, why did I do this? <laughs> uh, I was thinking maybe, should I, should I go back to having a, an out of the house job? Should I just? To it's good for the old mental health. Huh? It's good for the old mental health to have an outside yeah. nurse job. I don't. I just don't know if I would do the same thing though. I would rather something like one day a week. Something. I don't know. I don't know what I would want to do. Mm. I can't do. I don't want to do full time or. I don't know. No, I keep thinking about that, like a cheeky little one day, one day a week jog, like, you know, like a, a retired grandma. Yeah. I just yeah. go out and work at a charity shop for a few hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, you don't have to get paper, right? So, <laughs> yeah, that sounds ideal. Or, like, maybe just a shift in, in the library. Surely they can do one day in the library a week. Oh, I don't know. You need a fucking degree to be a librarian these days. <laughs> mm, true. Oh, yeah, because Lexi was trying to do that herself. Mm -hmm. Should sounds, do it um, I don't think so. Mm. Sounds intense, though. It does sound really intense. Yeah, it's like it's wild because, like, being a librarian was what, what I wanted to do when I was a kid. And I don't think if I think thought that you needed like a degree or something for it, I absolutely would not have wanted to be a librarian. I think Spoops did it though, right? Spoops. Um, has managed to become a librarian and I think she loves it. Yeah. But also this is a good point. Like the general public aren't worth the retail. I they gave me so much stress every single Christmas. It really wasn't worth doing it. It really wasn't. And also the buses are on strike up here until after Christmas. Like they're on strike until January. So if I had my part-time job, I wouldn't be able to get to work. I'd have to walk an hour to the Metal Center every day and an hour back. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they haven't come to a, an agreement with the bus strike, so they're out on strike until January. Oh, now. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, Laura, I, I said I wanted a cute little one day a week job, not absolute yep. fucking torture. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> I actually used to work with children. I, I used to um, volunteer for one week every summer at um, a Bible school, working in the nursery. Where I oh. did read to children. Oh, wow. 
Well, I can I can picture that honestly. You would be so good with children. So I don't. I've had baby fever recently, and it's really annoying. Oh, but you've got babies. You've got two babies. I don't look at that one. She lies there all day. And like it looks the thing is is like she's not always asleep. Sometimes she lies there with her eyes open and it's like she's in some sort of deep depression, just staring at a wall. Oh, so really well. Maybe just watching you, just like you she's just like staring, thinking all of the things about you. She is actually sleeping this time, so it is cute. Oh, that's, good. that's good. Um Turns out my library degree realized it was too social for me. Yeah, they kind of expected like people to just mind their own <laughs> when they go into a library. And imagine though, like a master's degree to be a librarian. Mm -hmm. It's wild. What I know, I'm, I'm thinking like what kind of classes do you take? Like what do you learn? What do you I just don't know how being a librarian is not a practical job that you learn. Mm -hmm. Like I just I don't, I don't get it. It seems like it is something that you would have to experience in order to get it. But I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got the baby. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everyone else with baby fever is actually pregnant. I'm not getting married for another two years and I'm definitely not getting married pregnant because like... <laughs> For me, a wedding is all about the aesthetics. So, like, I'm not doing that pregnant. No, no, you can. You've got plenty of time. I'm happy to have a baby, but then I've got the easy part for sure. If Curtis could be pregnant, then I would have already had one probably. Yeah. Library degrees, a lot of research and info management classes, and database classes. Oh, I would. You know, I would love to do the database classes because I love keeping. Oh my god, that is why all these spreadsheets are so good. Mm. Yeah, makes sense now. It does. It does make sense. That's why she's got 5,000 spreadsheets. Oh, speaking of Ali, um, we did the sprints last night and she told me every single time she does a live show on YouTube, something really dramatic happens. Mm. So the last time she did a 24-hour readathon, um, there was her, her neighbour was murdered while she was live. Uh, last night, there was a fire at her neighbor's house, like an actual The same house. one that was murdered? Yeah, her neighbor was murdered. Fortunately, they knew who did it, so it, it wasn't like a serial killer or anything, but her neighbor was actually murdered while she was live on YouTube for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. But she's just messaged, she just messaged to say that, oh, there was also an active shooter last night in the neighborhood. And I'm just like, Ali, stay away from being live on YouTube. Well, like, her house and stuff is really nice. How does she live in a neighbourhood where people are getting murdered, houses are on fire and there's an active shooter? Is this just well, she, It's funny because she literally said, oh, I live in such a nice area, in, like, a nice neighbourhood. It's so nice. And I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> you got shooters, fires, murderers. <laughs> just... Mm, damn. I know, right? But, yeah, you just reminded me when you said that that she just messaged there to say there was an active shooter last night. So I'm really glad she's okay. Yeah, wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, and she claims she lives in a good neighbourhood. Literally, yeah. And then she said her neighbourhood is calm. Well, she said it's only when she goes live on YouTube. Well, maybe she shouldn't. She's, like, playing r Russian roulette with other people. <laughs> she, she actually is. It's so selfish. <laughs> Stick to Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> Stick to Twitch. Although part of me is like a little bit sadistic and it's like, hmm, I wonder what would happen next time she's live on YouTube. Maybe we should invite her on. <laughs> it's denial. Everything's burning around here. Oh, it's lovely. It's <laughs> just a... like, yeah, it's a lovely place to live. I'd raise my kids here. Yeah? Wow. Mm hmm. That's yeah, really I just thought I would share that. There's oh, nothing that dramatic or exciting happens in my life. Hmm. One minute, he's me in the ear. Who's here? Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I don't like it. You could do with a second opinion. I don't like it. I can't look at that. And makeup. He looks like a massive blister. I need to say it. I don't think he looks good enough. Oh. It's not the same colour as your skin. Yeah, that's why I need makeup. 
So I'll just put concealer all over and it's the wrong color. <laughs> we, we, we can go into a sprint and Becca can help you in the next sprint. I hate you. <laughs> I don't will... need kids. I've got three kids if you include Curtis and me now with mm. some is. Halloween and, and still you have baby fever. I can't I can't deal with the liquid lip <laughs> I get it supposed to look like peeling skin but I have health I can see it and it really makes me feel sick oh no right go on Gav uh what are you doing 5 minutes hey I wanted to do it properly counting that but I I kind of failed I know you say in bronzer, Melissa, but I'm brown, so I don't have bronzer to start off with. And also, anything I put on his face is going to look ridiculously dark because he's not brown. So <laughs> we're going to have to patch this up somehow. He's as pale as I am. Um, not quite. You're very pale. <laughs> I am, <aren't> I? <laughs> uh, let me change the clock. Yeah, even when I came back from Japan, I was just red not brown did you just like fade back to white as well uh, very slowly slowly but surely i faded back to white <laughs> <laughs> i love this curtis you've made it to the 90s concealer not matching your skin yeah right let me go fix this liquid latex <laughs> Best of luck. i'll see you all in 40 minutes <laughs> see ya Say you wouldn't want to be you.
Du, 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 du. Yeah. Yes, Curtis gone. No, he's just doing his hands now. He's got no foundation. And I didn't realize, because I've never done liquid latex, I didn't realize that you make it out of like tissue. Oh, yeah. And you use like the latex. Latex is just glue. I thought the liquid latex was like a almost like a stringy, like silicone substance. Um, so yeah, I didn't realize how much, obviously, if you put foundation on toilet roll, it doesn't spread like it does on skin. And he didn't get any foundation, and my foundation is 40 pound MAC foundation. And I'm like, I'm not covering this toilet roll. Oh my god, my foundation, no. So I've done his head, but I don't know about his hand. We've been using that shitty concealer stick he's got and then just like dabbing it with my foundation to add it like more colour. Okay. He had to pick something complicated, didn't he? He did. And like I said, you should have been practicing this. And he's like, I put it on my hand. And I was like, yeah, an hour ago. <laughs> like I meant like days ago, weeks ago. <laughs> Not on the day of. Yeah. Like he said that he was leaving at three and it's 20 to four and he's still putting his hands on. We love him. We love him. It's all good. Uh, the next sprint will be the last one, I think. The last? I love the way you said that. The last. Sprint. The last sprint. Oh, that was so posh. I've been watching a lot of um, Shit's Creek. So. Is that good? Because I watched the first few episodes and I thought it was fine, but I didn't get invested. I think with sitcoms, I always have to watch into season two because season one is normally a write off. Like, season one of Friends isn't very good. Season one of The Office, shit. Parks and Recreation, season one, I didn't love either. Yeah. And I ended up loving that show. Yes. Good show, yeah. Well, I might give it a try again. I do like it. It's not my favorite, but I like it a lot. It's like, it's the same with all sitcoms. You just kind of get attached to the characters and then you don't even worry about whether it's funny or not most of the time. Yeah, true. I think that's what happened with Big Bang Theory. Like, I didn't find it funny anymore, but I just liked the characters and then I just stopped altogether at one point. But, oh, I, yeah. I finished Big Bang Theory. Was it worth it? Um, The ending was good, but like, I couldn't tell you what happened in what season it's all about. Hmm. Yeah. Depends how you like the girls that come into it though, because like I really love Bernadette and I know a lot of people can't stand her. She's fine to me. I don't mind her. I hate um Amy. I'm not an Amy fan. Amy Farrah Fowler. Mm. Again, Amy's fine. I find most of the characters fine after a while. So that's why I stopped. As soon as the characters stopped being like really investing for me, I just stopped outright. My favorite character, I think, is Howard. Oh no, I like I like Howard and Raj's dynamic. Yeah, they have a good dynamic. I like that. Raj I, is actually maybe the star of um, Big Bang, actually. Maybe it's been so long since I watched it. Um, me I'm up, sorry, up. Sophie. I'm sorry. I don't like the taste. Becca can kick me. A little recap for Deb of what's happening. Oh yeah. Thank you. He um yeah he he put it on we foundationed it and then he cut. It. But the thing is because it's toilet roll is like you try and rough it up and it peels back layers and it's white underneath. Mm, yeah. And I'm like amazing. Now I need to use more of my foundation. And then he like split it open and put lipstick through the middle. So there goes one of my lipsticks. Luckily I've got ninety five red ones and not all of them are Mac. Oh god, it better look good by the end of this. It better have been worth it as well. This is his barbed wire, so I don't think it's gonna. Like, look how far apart the barbs are. Yeah, that is quite far. You won't be able to see on his head. I'm gonna have to um wrap them. And hopefully the barbs, yeah, so the barbs will layer. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. So now there's like three barbs there. Yeah, that whatever i'm glad i'm not going now i'm not going with embarrassing jesus <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is stressful cody and liana both recommended this show have you watched it yet 
No, not yet, but everyone recommends it when I do the hot stopper videos. They're like, oh, you need to watch Off Lag Means Death. Isn't it just gay pirates? Mm -hmm. Which sounds right up my street. It's true. That's true, actually. No, it does. Sounds up your street and all, if you ask me. I mean, well, tonight I'm watching The Fall of House or Show because I haven't started it yet. Nice. Although I did re watch Scream last night and I don't know whether to watch Scream 2 tonight. Oh, that's also a good show. I love Scream so much. It's so I've good. got a bag of microwave popcorn as well with my name on it. It's been on the shelf for about a year and a half, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, once it's in the microwave, it'll just burn off any germs, I'm sure. I mean, it's sealed. It's mm. just things have used, uh, to be fair, I ignore used by dates on things like popcorn. I remember when I asked about used by dates in the freezer and you were like, well, you've frozen it, so... Curtis does that, like, I'll say, get the chicken out of the freezer, and he's like, it's good dated on, like, the 3rd of July, and I'm like, yes, because it was fresh before it went into the freezer, like, the whole, and then he's like, but does it not go out of date? And I'm like, if it went out of date at the same date that it says on the packet, why would I put it in the freezer? Like, what would be the point? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah what would be the point then? Uh, <sighs> man. Gay pirates with high stakes and queer joy, not a single morally totally okay character. Oh. Sign me up. It is... It might be Swalted. I love Swalted. I can't just do one or the other now. It has to be both together. I tend to, if I go to the cinema, I get sweet. But I think if I have it at home, I tend to have Swalted. It's sweet or Swalted anyway. I don't get Swalted on its own. It's the first time I've heard of Swalted. It's true, so. That's the first time. I like it. I'm glad that I saw it, though, because I just, I, I understood what the question was without actually reading it. And I was like, I'm sure it's mixed. And I was like, wait, does mixed exist? And then I saw Swalted and I was like, yeah, well, it must exist then. So. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. I was, I used to be like a strict sweet popcorn person. And then I discovered Swalted and I'm like, that is the one. That is the way forward. The only way forward. I can't, I can't do salted on its own. I feel like so popcorn is a sweet treat for me, so to have just salted, like, doesn't, it's like eating a bag of crisps, and I'd rather eat a bag of crisps. Yeah, and it makes me so thirsty, too. When yeah. it's just, like, I just want to be able to enjoy something and not have to worry about anything else. I do love popcorn, but thinking about it, I hate the little bits that get stuck in your teeth, so it's going to piss me off afterwards. And sometimes when you have one that is literally still the, the hard... Oh, you bite it, yeah. You bite it, yeah, and you're like, ah, fuck. <laughs> I hate that too. For me, it's the bits, you know, like the little brown bits that then fit onto your tooth like an external shell, and then you just can't get them off, mm. like stuff yeah. right in front of you too. Yeah. Lush. <laughs> I would say that is actually not okay. Reduce your sodium intake, Sophie. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know how much um, salt I actually consume, but I eat a lot of cheese, so probably quite a lot. Hmm. You don't want to use it. What I do usually is I get five boxes of chicken strips from Iceland, the TGI Fridays chicken strips. Oh, that okay. And I have those five times a week. Damn. With anything else? No, just that. Just a box of chicken strips. Uh huh. And it, well, I put it in a bowl because you put the sauce on it. It's like the the. What flavour is that one? I know I've had the boneless wings before that were really nice. Uh, it's just like the TGI Friday sauce. Um, it must be like some kind of like it, a little bit barbecue-y. I can, I can get it up. Can you? Can you I, get oh, it? Up? In, in any, oh, it's a tennis, Tennessee style glaze. Oh, nice. I literally have it like five times a week. I am um, generally like frozen chicken from Iceland in general. I get the stuff, you know, that's just their own brand. Mm, yeah, I've got like four different bags of chicken strips in the freezer, and though I really like Iceland wings, yeah, there's so much from my I, I've re ever since getting an air fryer, discovering Iceland. Well, obviously, I knew about it before, but discovering that I should get from Iceland has been a revelation. Wow, well. can't believe you have it five times a week, yeah, literally. Like, I get five boxes on my weekly shop. Um, there's all they also do like this um this house and duck pizza that I like every now and then too. I sometimes mm -hmm. have chicken wings, I sometimes have it's just a lot of chicken. I don't know what purple bag chicken is. Purple bag. Okay. 
I was like, why is the batter purple? I don't know what the purple one is. I don't remember. Uh, crispy is like the glass filled strips. I like the Pokora ones, the strips. Um, mm. Barbecue, actually, which is weird because I don't actually like barbecue flavored things normally, but the barbecue batter from Iceland's nice. Oh, but for yeah. the um, for the chicken wings, I always get hot and spicy. Oh, or maybe I might branch out and try something different. Maybe you should. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Oh, savory popcorn. Interesting. Of course, that's something they serve at the Alchemist. Mm. Snobby bastards. <laughs> Do love Alchemist, though, can't lie. Me too. Me too. I'll joke about it. I'll laugh at them, but... And then I'll... you'll give them your hard-earned cash. I will. I so will. they can make you, like, a cocktail that's actually just, like, a glass of smoke. Literally. I can take one... All it will take is one gulp and it's gone. Yeah. yeah. As long as I get that photo. I um, haven't been to Botanist yet, which is, I, I, from what I hear, it's the same as Alchemist, but with plants. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. There's one in Newcastle. There's one um, in York. It's just when I'm in York, it's normally a daytime thing, and who goes for a casual afternoon drink at Botanist? It's like will. when I'm doing my shopping, just like, let's have a casual, like, I'll terrarium. <laughs> let's, do it. let's go to York, let's go to the Botanist during the day, and then ghost hunt at night. You're going to say they go home. Well, go home at night. We'll have to if you want. And then what should we drink? A lot, well, we'll have to make it last because, yeah, I think at the botanist it's still not that much drink. It's more aesthetic than anything else still. So it would be expensive. Probably. Mm. God damn. I wonder how Jesus is getting on. <laughs> I said to him, I was like, I can't believe you dressed as Easter Jesus on Halloween. And he was like, oh, I forgot it was Easter Jesus. And he went, well, you can't dress as Easter Jesus. <laughs> you can't dress as Easter Jesus on Easter, can you? They'll chase you out of the egg hunt. <laughs> <laughs> um, Evil Eye in York is still open. Okay. I've, I've been recommended this place so many times. Like, everyone's like, go to Evil Eye constantly. I went to Evil Eye and it's like going to a student bar for student cocktails where it's more syrup than alcohol. Yeah. And I yeah. just don't want, and they're served in like cloudy glasses. And yeah. it's just like very like dingy student aesthetic. And I'm like, I don't get it. I don't yeah, get yeah. it. The one place I went, uh, the, well, the time I went, the floor was just so sticky. But there was another one that I liked in York that wasn't Evil Eye, it was something else that was, it did a zombie that just blew my head off and it was amazing. Oh, I can't remember what it was called though, but it was in York. Do you know um, where? I couldn't tell you. It was down an alley. It was down one of the alleys. But it wasn't Evil Eye. It wasn't Slug and Lettuce. It wasn't The Botanist. It wasn't Bora Bora. It was like a really small place. Like it's tiny. It does have like upstairs. It has like a couple of floors, but it's tiny. It's like cramped. But oh, I don't mm -hmm. remember. it was so good. Not turtle bay. So I'm mean, even just looking at cocktail places on maps. I don't. It's not even coming up on the first page. It must be like really, like underrated. Because no, no one must have been there. Is it thirteen thirty one? Maybe it might be in thirteen thirty one. But it's just not coming up. And I loved it so much. Maybe it's closed now. That's why it's not coming up. Is it 1331? I mean, 1331 does not have the aesthetic of a cocktail place, but they do two for one cocktails all day and night. Mm, no, I don't, I don't think it is that place because they don't do food. Oh, wait, no, hang on. I think it is. 1331, hang on. I need to say... It more the inside. No, it's not that one. It's not that one. Damn, okay, maybe they've closed it because none of these names ring a bell, fortunately. Maybe. I'll see, I'll see if I can get a photo of uh, the zombie thing, because it was bigger than my head. In... Well, that's all you need for a good endorsement from Gary. It just needs to be bigger than his head. Mm. I hope you're listening, lads. got to be huge, because i got a big, big head. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, son. 
Damn I'm actually excited. I might skip my workout tonight because, like, I'm still unwell. So. Yeah. I mean, I think doing this live show is a workout. You know, having yeah. to spend five hours with me. Well, putting up with you is a workout. I can attest to that. I think you've, like, probably burned a lot of calories. Being in your bedroom has me sweating all day long. Because <laughs> that's so hot. Damn right. <laughs> Look at her. Which way do I need to turn? That way. Uh, I can't believe she's still there. Just... She sleeps all day. She perks up at about five because she's noticed that I work all day. So she sits all day. And then when I stop working and I want to sit all day, she mm. is throwing toys at me. Smart girl. Smart yes. girl. I'm, Ash and Toby, they're bored with me now. And I try and play with them so they'll run away. And I'm like, I, I've got nothing for you anymore. I don't know what to play with them with. I buy them toys all the time. And they're just, they're so ungrateful. Honestly. Hamilton's ungrateful. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what to do anymore. Kids, eh? I know, who would have them? Who would have them? She's cute, though. She is. Where? Damn right. And you know, I've got to do the dishes tonight because Curtis is out and that's going to be a workout. Yeah, let's get the workout today. Enjoy um, Fall of the House of Usher, whatever it's called, or Scream 2, and just make a night of it. You deserve it. I'm right, I do. Plus, um, yeah, I did an exercise yesterday, which was like a bit off this week because of my cold. So it was mm. like okay, but it wasn't amazing, you know, because I don't feel 100%. You haven't been too bad in this live show, though. You haven't no, been... since um, the first couple of sprints, I've, like, my throat's calmed down a lot. Oh, that's good. It's probably because of me. Uh, is that 55? Yes, look at you go. It's like, because it's one less than 12. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, it was so easy that way. <laughs> I thought you'd just be overwhelmed by dots and going to panic. <laughs> I was like, I just combust. <laughs> I'm going to have to go check on Jesus, how he's getting along in a minute. Yeah, I'm going to read some research stuff. I was reading some research stuff on this. Oh, um, I was going to ask what you were doing there, because I noticed you weren't reading. Yeah, I was, re I was reading some research stuff, and actually it's starting to make a little bit more sense mm -hmm. with things being explained, so that's good. I'm I also read to Cameron, but I need to put her, I need to cook her dinner, because she's having chicken and rice. Oh, you're not going to get much reading done in this sprint, then. No, I'll check on Jesus, and then I'll make food for a dog. <laughs> the life of a mother. I know, it never stops. It never stops. All right, I'll see you all in 55 minutes. Bye.
Ooh. Hi, that was lovely. Lovely little scare from Mr. Curtis there. Mr. Jesus. <laughs> he, kept, um, he kept swearing using Jesus without noticing it, and it was really funny. Like, Brie was sniffing his feet, and he was worried that she was going to, like, lick the little scars he put on there, and he went, Jesus, and I was like, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to do that all night now. Yeah. But, um, he's gone now. He's left me. Oh, it's kind of a, a blessing as well. This was so. him leaving. <laughs> Jesus is out. He's out the building. I was like, how do I get to my car? And I was like, that's a you problem, my guy. <laughs> oh, so, oh, so many people are going to see him on the way on there. Yep. Wow. That's wow. what you get. So I thought that he was um, getting ready there, but apparently not. There are worse costumes to have. It's true. Mm -hmm. How did you do in the sprint? Are you doing research? I finished the research. I started editing that vlog. And then I just scrolled for like the last 10 minutes as well. Because I haven't been keeping up to date on my Twitter dramas and all of that that I like to keep up with. Oh, I don't go on Twitter. I went on Twitter the other day when I was editing my TBR, you know, so I could get the icons from the profiles for the readathons that I'm doing. Um, and I was on there for literally just for that. And I saw a tweet of someone being angry and then started reading it. And I was like, this is why I don't come here anymore. And then I left. Yeah. No fair. Fair. The the drama and everything is all petty on there. But I, I kind of, because I keep up with a lot of the YouTubers drama, like, you know, Colleen Ballinger and all the stuff that happened this year. And oh my God. Like, you need to watch Whoop. You need to watch Whoop. She does the best, like documentary deep dives into uh, all of the stuff that happens with uh, dangerous influencers and stuff. And yeah, she's just incredible. But yeah, just a lot and lots and lots of weird YouTuber drama. That and sounds I'm like you're inviting toxicity into your life, and I try to expel I toxicity. I am. Well, let me take it all in then for you. I'll take it in. Right. You dispel. I absorb. You could be my toxic sponge. <laughs> I like that. I bet you do. I bet you do. How have you not seen the ukulele apology? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh my God. It's literally Colin Ballinger. She was, how you heard of Miranda Sings? Like, right, so mm -hmm. I don't go on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I stopped using Twitter and I don't watch the news. So I have no idea what is happening anywhere, ever. And it didn't get recommended to you on YouTube? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Literally, she, like, groomed children. She had, like, she was Miranda Sings on YouTube. She's one of, like, the original popular YouTubers. Is She's, that Colleen Ballinger? Is that her name? Yeah, Colleen Ballinger, and she played a character called Miranda Sings. She okay. had a two-season Netflix series. Uh, called Haters Back Off, based on the character she made popular on YouTube. And she did a ukulele video where she doesn't admit to doing anything wrong. Like, that's her apology video. And it's honestly so... It's so bad, like, everything that happened. And then Swoop covered it. And she's done, like, four parts to it. And part three was so dramatic because one of the victims who came forward about what Colleen did... And what her husband did. Oh, shit, I was supposed to do that again. Um, and he turned out to be a liar. And it's just like so much drama and stuff happened. It's just like, oh, my God. I feel like I'm looking at her and I'm like, I feel like I recognize her, but actually, do I? You probably do. Like, she she was, like, one of the big ones, along with, like, Shane Dawson and all of them. So she was grooming kids? Well, she was, like, doing really well. I think she was sending porn to minors and um, getting uh, somebody called Adam to do her Twitter stuff for her, who was also underage and wasn't paying him and stuff like that. There's, like, so much that she did. Like, she sent him panties and bras, and it's just yeah. it's so messy. You need to watch the... I think the Swoop documentaries comes to around about four or five hours. So maybe watch that tonight instead of Fall of the House of Usher. Maybe wait till November so I can watch my spooky shit. Yeah. <laughs> Although this is spooky shit. This is spooky shit as well. This is true crime. It is true crime. I didn't watch YouTube at all until I until 2017. 
really like not at all no wow. it was like because obviously like i feel like we lived in a time where the internet was still like youtube i feel was aimed at teenage boys mm-hmm. and like there's all different sides to youtube but mainly it was like logan paul and like that kind of stuff which doesn't appeal to me so i wasn't really watching youtube i used to watch jimmy zero zero one zero i haven't heard of that one He's like a British guy that used to just do like funny rants. Like I don't even know if he's that big, and I don't know how I found him. Jimmy zero zero one zero. Yeah. Jimmy Hill. Oh, it's a radio personality now. Yeah, he is now. But and yeah, I think that's maybe maybe it. That's the other person I used to watch. Wow. <laughs> so me, I couldn't sing. My apology was they never told me I couldn't sing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I fucking hate Zoella. I don't know anything about her apart from like she's got a book club and for why. I have no idea. I like. I just yeah. get really annoyed when you go somewhere and it's like, oh my god, Zoella shampoo, and I'm like, why? <laughs> so <laughs> many, so many people came into Waterstones wanting her books like all the time. All the time. And I had no idea who she was. Mm. I need to watch one of her videos, see what it's like. I think her type of YouTube is not... Like, I do watch one lifestyle vlogger, um, which is Helen Anderson. Helen Anderson? Yeah. I think her channel might be Helen Anders, unless it's Helen Anderson. And her Instagram's Helen Anders. Helen Anders is the tag. Oh, shit, sorry. Are Um, you okay with all of your sound effects in your balloons? (laughs) It's because when I click on these channels, they have an automatic video that plays. It's so uh, um, But I've never seen this person before either. Helen Anderson. Nice. Okay. I'll give them a watch too. I just like watching her vlogs. Weekly vlog babies hate me. <laughs> oh, I was too old for JLS. Oh my gosh. From I just, I just back- don't care what's in your bag. Did well, I care when I was 17? Well, maybe you should start caring. Do you not care what's in my bag? I know what's in your bag, a bunch of fucking dildos. <laughs> <laughs> and a book. <laughs> Just the one book. But loads of dildos. <laughs> wait, did you ever... Oh, wait. I don't know if I should say it out loud, honestly, on the live show. Because he didn't well, I get I... you for, for your birthday one year. Oh, the Kama Sutra. Yeah, it's upstairs. <laughs> I thought maybe you would have thrown it out straight away, like, nope. <laughs> um, I remember Helen when she was Helen Mellon. Oh, that's a good name. I used to go on um, YouTube sometimes for things like this, like looking at how to do things, like somebody said makeup videos, and I used to, like, if I want to do something in particular, like, how do you do this, and I Google it and the, the YouTube tutorial, and I used to use YouTube like that, but I never used to like, watch it like TV. No. Upstairs, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Gavin's toy box bag sponsored by Love Honey. You know what? I should reach out to them. The amount of times I talk about stuff that I get from there. I've had a vibra- vibrator sponsorship. Oh, you little witch. Hello. Dis- Not long ago, actually, last month. Disgusting. I got two. One time's free. Good grief! And you didn't think to send me one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> After I've used it. It's <laughs> and. <laughs> we need to. We need to leave. I think. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting to that point in the in the day where we're just talking about things we shouldn't be talking about. Rampant rabbit, rabbits are still a thing, yeah, but specifically, I'm pretty sure that's like a specific Hans Summers brand. Mm. Makes sense. Makes sense. See, I've gone the opposite way. Like, I know because my favourite thing is a vlog, I watch lifestyle vlogs, or I try to. If I watch your vlog, I have to like you as a person, which is why I never watch Gavin's. Um... <laughs> Because you will love, love me as a person, not like me. <laughs> love me. And it's hard to find, um, like, just by Googling, like, life. Because you can't just Google vlog. 
because like you'll get literally everything because it's all like different types of vlog so it's hard to find just like a lifestyle vlogger that i like that's why a youtube vlog that i like most of the time i'm very picky these days yeah it's i watched your q a and it seemed like you kind of lean more towards booktubers who include a lot of lifestyle stuff like they don't just talk about books in their vlogs when right. my mental health was really bad i stopped interacting with book content at all so it was olivia that made me actually start watching booktube again because i felt like i was always switched on with work and booktube constantly mm -hmm. so watching olivia who's somebody that i still have never spoken to and i'm not saying that like you know oh my god she doesn't speak to me like i've just literally never spoken to her so it's not like i had any kind of opinion on her other than whether or not i liked her content yeah and because she has so much lifestyle and she just talks in her vlogs mm -hmm. like i found them very soothing yeah um, and that's when i started watching lifestyle as well but i like lifestyle heavy booktube vlogs because then it's like still bookish but also like other stuff yeah it's like a blank slate when it's like people you don't or like yeah. you've never spoken to before yeah because it's not like I'll, I'll like i could put somebody's vlog on and be like oh, i remember when i messaged that person five years ago and they never responded <laughs> So like, like I Olivia literally I'll never get around to it eventually, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when my mental health was really bad and I felt overwhelmed, I just needed something that was enjoyable without having any connection to anything to it. And that's what Olivia's vlogs were to me. And now that I'm like better, like I just have continued to watch vlogs. I watch vlogs and TBRs and holes, that's it. Mm. So isn't that all there is on Bookshoe? I'm just like I'm trying to think of what is what do we do? I mean, pretty much. Like I remember the day when it, the days when everyone was like, "Oh, I want book recommendations videos. I want these like sit down videos of mine." Like, mm. rarely get that many views. Like it's just vlogs, vlogs, hauls, and TVRs and unboxings. Yeah, and unhauls. So watch. Mm, yeah, I wrap ups. I just can't watch or do anymore. That's something that is there. Is there specific booktube content that you would actively avoid? Is the specific what you what you content I would act, act actively avoid? Yeah. Um, I don't watch any single book reviews. Mm. Um, I think along the same lines of what I said about not being able to interact with what you content when I was very anxious, because it is something that like it's it's an area that I work in and I have worked like I've been in this community since two thousand and seventeen. Mm. I can't just watch somebody's review without having an opinion on it like I can't so if you're reviewing a book that I've read and I disagree with you and you're doing like an in-depth review then I'm going to have opinions and because my mental health was bad like I was trying to do like have do things that generate as little energy as possible because it was tiring so like I don't want to like I wanted a lot more passive content so I just generally don't watch reviews anymore I also find that like if I'm reading a book that I've seen a review from I might think that I'm wrong because somebody else said something different. Mm. If I know that they said it, so I tend to I, I avoid opinions <laughs> as much no. as possible, which is wild. No fair, that makes a whole lot of sense. I I try not to also read watch reviews because I don't want to accidentally think the same thing. Like I think, am I only thinking this because someone else said it, or because I genuinely think that? Yeah. So I get if it. someone points something out and I'm like, well, do I actually agree with them or am I just saying it because they said it and I assume that they're right because they said it? Like, yeah, honestly, it's it's hard to have your own voice sometimes in, in BookTube. So it sometimes I do that too. I, I prefer to watch just general, fun, tiny vlogs or like TBRs of the calls, as you say. Those are my I think favorite. it's something to do with an attention span for me as well. Like I don't like editing wrap-ups because I find them long-winded mm -hmm. to edit. And I also don't like watching wrap ups because it's something like I don't know. I'm just like, I'm I'm bored. Not this isn't to discredit the creator. This is me and my response to various types of content these days. I'm like I'm I'm bored of listening about this book now. I don't want to hear about this book anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they're not being engaging or anything. That's like I just don't care about anyone's opinions on any books, which is like really <laughs> weird considering the thing I'm in. But. I don't know i feel like there's a lot in this community to compare yourself and see people not necessarily as competition but you're always comparing yourself to people around you so i found it best to limit my contact with people around me 
yeah and like not interacting with content and then the people that i do watch or i did watch at that time are people that i have nothing ever to do with like i said no shade on olivia obviously i said she's my favorite booktuber i watch all of her videos but i've literally never spoken to her so i have nothing to do with her at all and so watching her content was really easy for me at mm -hmm. the time fair it makes a lot of sense it does study with me yeah i have uh, my like recommended pages just booktube content and like ambience rooms like rainfall noise and stuff well if you start watching swoop you'll get all of the like the tea you'll get all of the tea recommendations i so. know so it depends how it is because i avoid comment sections of things like videos like that Do you know where people are getting really angry because mm. i noticed i don't know whether i've unlocked something from my childhood but i don't the reason why twitter upsets me so much is that being adjacent to angry people makes me really on edge and i don't know like my parents argued like all parents argue but they didn't get divorced or anything they were never overly like aggressive there was no violence in my house but it reminds me of being sat in my bedroom listening to my parents argue mm. um so like anything where people are getting too angry i'm like i mm, just can't i can't do that today okay maybe stay away from that then yeah <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just stay out of the comments because sometimes I like the tea. I like watching like reality TV where there's like tea not flying everywhere. Yeah. I, have you watched Selling Sunset or like Selling Me or Say or anything on Netflix? No, because I'm still okay. So I'm, I've got like a couple of episodes left of the latest season of Love is Blind. And okay. then I've got season two of The Ultimatum to watch. And then I can start watching something new because I'm still catching up on the things that I'm. Well, keep that in mind because it's a mixture of amazing houses that you kind of wish you could live in yourself, plus like really petty drama that mm. kind of just puts everything into perspective for yourself. It makes you feel better, in my opinion. It might make you feel worse, I don't know, but like, it makes me feel better <laughs> about myself watching yeah. it. So. Just in case you wanted a recommendation. I do love me some reality TV recommendations. I started watching... Um... What's the one that isn't Love is Blind? Um, oh, first sight. Uh, yeah, that one. And I didn't like it because I didn't realise it was British when I started it and it's so aggressively British. Mm. So I think I need to start watching from the later seasons, not season one. No, probably not. Probably not. Oh, wait, oh, am I thinking of Married at First Sight? Love at First yeah, Sight? Yeah, that one. Married, Married at First Sight. Yeah, I want, when my housemate lived here last year, he loves everything like that. So I ended up watching a few episodes with him and oh my God. I, I I couldn't do it. It was oh my god. I even applied for it afterwards. Obviously I didn't get it, but I got I they said do you want to apply for Love is Blind? And I was like I don't oh. understand that though, because you're gay and there's no gay Love is Blind yet. I don't know. Well, let me let me get the email back up because I want to remember it might was it I'm sure it was it Love is Blind. Did I message you about this? Yeah, you said um, Love is Blind, and I had only just started watching it at that point, so I didn't really think about it, but now that I watch Love is Blind, I'm like, Love is Blind is is straight, unless they're planning a queer one, because they did a queer version of The Ultimatum. Maybe. But I didn't unless... know that they planned them like, that far in advance, and also the it's American, and I think there's Australia, Brazil. Um, yeah. Is it Australia? I don't think there is. There's like ones in different countries, but not here. Well, it says apply for the first series of Lovers Blind UK. Oh, maybe they're starting one then. Yeah. Uh, oh, you... the money. This, this is what I don't understand about Selling Sunset because I've watched programs like this before where they're like, oh, I'm renting right now and I'm saving to buy my first house. And I'm like, how much money do you need? Because you get commission on like multi million dollar houses. How much money do you need? for oh like your first house. just buy a smaller house and then when you make more money buy a bigger house like you literally work in real estate why are you renting mm. yeah the amount yeah the amount of times that you see the commission that they get in selling sunset and it's like thousands upon thousands of dollars damn it's incredible though okay. but yeah apparently they're making a love is blind joke okay? Nice. I, it's going to make me cringe. I hate watching British TV because I see how cringe we all are and I hate it. I'm like, you're disgusted. Same. I, I, I hate it too. Vile, vile people. I would, you know, if I was in Lover's Mind UK, I would have been, I would I would have plastered up. I would have made it classy. It wouldn't have been cringe. 
you know me, Becca. I'm well, this mind is always crazy. I could just imagine you in the pods, like trying to fall in love <laughs> and like get married in like three weeks. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I would be the first one rejected. That's what I would be. <laughs> okay, guys, we'll wrap up sprints here because we're not sprinting anymore. We're just gassing, <laughs> uh, which is standard. Well, so, thank you guys for joining me today. I will be back, I think, on Tuesday because that's the last day of the month. So there will be more sprints. Halloween. Indeed. Probably just daytime. I normally do like a full day one, but because it's Halloween, I might want to do stuff on Halloween night. So maybe not, but we'll see. You should wear a costume. Absolutely fucking not. I don't even have one. I've just got, I think I threw those wings in the bin not long ago because they were tucked behind oh. the sofa covered in dust. Oh, no. So you could have used them for Tuesday. Or just fung them up or something. They were monumental. Well, I got nothing anymore. Sorry. Wow. Well, shows how much you cared. I can be <laughs> Jesus too. We can all Jesus for everyone. Yeah, yeah. We'll all come on as Jesus, as Easter Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you for joining us. Bye.